here is big, and it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare. At the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live at the Bike, brought to you by the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California, the first and only webcast of real action cash game poker. I am here with my co-host, David Tuckman. He will be here every night now, with the exception of the times that Shirley uh, comes in here occasionally, as yeah. Shirley departed from the show last night in style with a jackpot. Yeah. Uh, the hand after you left the booth. Right. Boom. Jackpot. Jackpot. Now, tonight's Wednesday night. Normally, we do Poker Blues Whale Night. But because the host of the game, Yoshi Nakano, and most of the other players that play in that game are in the Bahamas for the Poker Stars WPT event, we're not going to be doing that game. We're actually going to be doing a $200 no limit game. Um, again, this is just this week. Yeah, the whale game is not gone. You know, we'll have it back next week. It's I think half of the big hitters are at the Rose Bowl. The yeah. other half are in the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, let's get to it. Let's get to the action. Uh, we haven't done a 200 game in a while, Dave, so this might be a lot of fun. Looks like there's a lot of chips on the table. Let's go around and introduce the table. Yeah, you know, I was actually thinking last night we should have a $200 game at some point. And let's see. C1, we've got David Munoz. And David's got about $325 or so in front of him. Seat two, we've got Jerry Gerstel. Uh, Jerry's at Live at the Bike regular, and he looks like he's got, I can't quite tell, some reason in my head. He's definitely got more than 200. Seat three, we've got Brantley, S. Brantley purse. Uh, wearing the old Joker shirt, and he's got about $200 in front of him. Seat four is Jeff Blend, pretty ABC player, and he's got close to, I want to say, over 700 there. Seat five, we've got, uh, is that Edward? Looks like Edward it. Levi, yeah. and uh, Edward Levi's got about four hundred dollars. Seat six, we've got uh, Peter Greystoke. I love that guy's name, man. Greystoke. Peter Greystoke, Mr. Greystoke. It's fabulous, and uh, he's got about five fifty. We got Stephen Wood, the magician, in seat seven. Yeah, he's got a picture of his uh, yeah. little business card there. And we got Victor Chu, Mike. We'll call him Mike there. And he's got fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. And seat nine, we've got Jeffrey Madsen, who's got about six hundred. Wow. So let's get to the action. And uh, that hand, we actually had a guy who had aces, made a re-raise, and he took it down free flop on seat three. Yeah. Now this, the game, the uh, blinds in this game are two and three and five. Uh, the chips that we use in this game, the yellow chips are $5 chips, the blue chips are $1 chips. If you see purples, they're 25s. I don't think they really appear in this game all that much. Uh, a rack is a thousand, uh, excuse me, 500 bucks. And a stack of yellow is 100. 20 chips in a stack. So that's usually how you can tell how much money these guys have. And we're going to get into the first hand here. Of course, if you want to be interactive with this show, you can also always email us at live at the bike. Dot com. You also can follow a couple threads that are started about the show at 2plus2.com. Yes. And uh, full contact poker now. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, if you don't know how to get to those sites, just go to liveatthebike.com, yep. spelled out, and you can click on our links. Yep. Pot was limped around here, free flop. Yeah, Victor's got the best hand here. He's got ace eight. And he bet 25. But look at Jeffrey. He actually, he's oh, got the bottom wow. two pair, and he's going to check raise. $25 bet there by the ace eight, and Jeffrey's going to check raise it. He's going to make it 75 to go. And seat number eight, Victor. Yeah, let's see what he's going to do here. Got folded back to him. Yeah, he doesn't have much of a hand here. He's got ace eight. He's got the eight of spades. Now, if he had the ace of spades, it's a little bit of a different hand. He's got a redraw. Yeah. Um, Sometimes he much there. You know, it's interesting, sometimes you talk about hands that are extremely vulnerable, which, say, in a pot that was limped around, um, and it's got more than five players. You flop bottom two pair, and it's connected with the straight draw and the flush draw. You know, sometimes I say, you know, a check raise might be in order there, so you can get some money in the pot, but you can drive out everybody. Because if you just bet, say, 25 into a $25 pot, you might get called by several people and then really not know where you're at. On well, because somebody, exactly, people yeah. have implied odds right. to take one off, especially if you have $600 behind. Right, right. Seat 9 is going to raise here to 20. Kind of a little mini raise there. You've got Queen Jack offsuit. 
Jeff's got pocket sevens. He makes the call there in seat four. And looks like it's going to be heads up here. Queen Jack against sevens. Jeffrey's got position here as the pre flop razor. Oh, oh wow. Uh -oh. He's got top pair, and Jeff's hit his set. Wow, and those are the trouble ones. Jeff's going to check his set from up front here. And Jeffrey checks the queen right behind him, Dave. Is he going to raise the turn here if Jeff leads? Really odd there. I, 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 I think Jeff did. He checked it again. He checked it again. Well, I'm Jeffrey to... bet. And then Jeff has raised now. I mean, Jeffrey with the seven. Jeff actually, the seven's actually raised it, checked both times. Well, I'm trying to just find out where the button is here. I can't yeah, quite six, see. And I'm trying to see who's got position. No, he had, C4's got position. Oh, he does have position. So he That's checked behind thing. him, yeah, I see. Yeah, So he checked behind him, and he's raised here on the turn. And uh, we got a call here. Here we go to the river. The river's a king. And this pot is over $200. Yeah. Did Three Jeff seven, check the set there on the river, Dave? In is that position? Russ Fox? In what costume? What the hell? I mean, that's He's almost the nuts right there. No, I mean, what are you scared of? You lose to 5-6. You lose no, to a no, set of queens and a set of kings, no, right? And a set of eights, I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not really quite sure how he played it there. He, I'm trying to get the thing. Now, seat nine, Jeff Ree, raised with queen jack, $20. I think that actually we... You call with sevens. That's how it happens. Yeah, yeah. And the, the flop came out, and the queen jack checked it from up front. Right. And the sevens checked from behind, which right. I don't understand either. Right. Then the turn comes out. Well, the guy with Queen Jack then goes, okay, my Queen's probably good. I right. bet $35. Right. And then he made it $135. Right. I was there for it. Got a call. Yeah. And I laid it down. And yeah. then it went check, I check. I mean, wow. What do you, uh, in position, I don't know what he's scared of. You know, we sometimes talk about not necessarily valuing betting marginal hands on the river if the other guy is deep stacked and you're deep stacked because you don't want to face... You know, a giant check race. That was not a marginal hand. Well, I mean, if, if I've got queen ten there, right. you know what I mean? Right. I got right. top pair with like not a great kick, and then the king comes on the river. Right. Okay, maybe I check it down. Right. But four way action here. Yeah, set of sevens. Limped around ten eight seven here. Nice flop for Steven. Yeah, he's got top pair and he's open ended. Yeah. Fifteen. But look at this. Victor is going to come out and bet here with deuce seven. He bets fifteen. Steven checked the 9-10 from up front. Let's see if he's going to throw a little check raise in here, Dave. Steven trying to plug something there, you think? <laughs> he's just going to call, and Jerry called, too, with a gut shot to the jack. The turn's a deuce, and look at this. Victor's made two pair. And now Steven, who smooth called the flop, check Boy. called, is going to lead now into the turn. And Victor's going to raise. Well, you got to raise that. And he's going to make raise it 100, 100 more. more. Too many draws out there. Somebody got a 9. you got to really be scared of that. And actually, Jerry's open-ended here, Dave, but yeah. if he gets the jack, it's the good straight. It's right. the nut straight. He would beat Steven's not, uh, jack eye straight if the nine... Uh, With one card to go, though, 135 to, to call. Yeah. 140 to call. Right. I don't think so. So it's 100 more here. I was thinking that Steven was going to check raise the flop, but he just check called, and he's led into the turn, and, and Victor's hit an amazing turn card, and That's Steven's going to lay it down there. There it is. Well, nothing like betting with seven. Who said seven deuces the worst hand in poker? <laughs> and the button there is going to move over to seat number seven. So, Dave, it's a big, uh, big, big day here in LA sports. If there is such a thing, I mean, I'm used to East Coast people being diehard. Sports fans, you know, out here it's just kind of blase. You well, unless, unless the Lakers are good, but since the Lakers right, suck, right. you know, you got kind of nobody really cares. going on. Texas against yeah. USC. Oh, man. And actually, I was playing 30 Hold'em, Dave, earlier this afternoon with a guy who was a ticket broker. Oh, talking yeah? Talking about how he's, oh, made more, a ticket? he's made more money off of this event than any event in L.A. Oh, say, I, the last 20 years. No doubt. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, you got to look at it. This game has featured two Heisman winners plus a Heisman runner-up. Yep. Plus the undisputed one and two team. You know, I mean, these are two of the sexiest teams there are, you know? We had a raise here to $20 by, looks like, three players. 
seat seven. And we got to see three-way action here. Eight, four, three with a couple of hearts. And look at Jeffrey. He's got bottom two pair in seat nine. Yeah, that's not a bad flop for fives, man. I tell you. Yeah. 45. He's going to bet 45. You're only facing one over card. And again, I, I don't, I don't want to drive it to death here, Dave, but these are some of the most the toughest decisions in No Limit Hold'em. When you've got that mid-level pocket pair, and you don't know if you're good or not, you're facing one over card. Well, there are a lot of, I mean, are, are, are you facing a heart draw here? Are you facing a straight draw here? Or does somebody have, like, you know, 9-8, eight, 8-7? Eight, and other people sometimes will bet out here with ace-queen, thinking maybe you didn't hit the flop as well. Um, that is more of a limit play, but, you know, you see it here occasionally, No, it happens too. a lot, hey. Yeah. I mean, you might be up against pocket sixes, too. I mean, yeah, yeah. who knows? This is where, uh, you know, you really just have to read your opponent. Yep. It's one of the things that, in, like, an internet, when you're on the line, it's really difficult. You know, how do you read an opponent? How do you read somebody's tells online? You don't want to sit there. These guys play a lot of those things. Maybe this guy will do a couple tricks for us throughout the show. Maybe our floor host out there, Ronnie, can ask the guy to do some tricks for us. Maybe he can make his rack disappear in his pants or something like that. Kick well, I don't want his rack to disappear in his pants. <laughs> Maybe you can, like, yeah, yeah, hurry up and act. There you go. Boom. He just made his cards disappear. It's going to fold. I mean, speaking of the Rose Bowl, I mean, I have very little. I mean, almost no interest in the game whatsoever. I mean, I almost forgot there was even a game tonight. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to Saturday, obviously. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to Saturday, obviously. I mean, college football's one thing, Dave, but there's really only one meaningful game now. And that meaningful game's only been going around for, what, eight to nine years since the BCS. And sometimes it's still a joke, and it still means nothing. Now, in this yeah. case, this year it does. But uh, the NFL is just, I think it's just superior in terms of football. Well, obviously, better players are there. Right. But, I mean, to, the only thing that's nice about college football is there's probably about 100,000 people at the Rose Bowl. Tonight. Yeah, that is. That you is don't get that kind of excitement around the NFL game. Limp here. Now, the exact opposite I hold in terms of basketball. I think college basketball is 100% better than the NBA. I refuse to watch the More NBA. exciting. Four-way action here. 10-6-6. David's got top pair. And he's going to come out and bet here with the jack. 20. He bets 20. I actually see nine bets. Oh, you're right. Look Deuce four. Jeffrey bet it. Maybe he thinks, well, again, you know, you know, the board comes paired. And and David's not going to play. There you go. Jeffrey's going to take it. And you know what? Some people can look at that and go, how do you lay that down? You know, it's not a bad lay down. Because you go, okay, there's no draw there whatsoever. Well, you're next to act, too. you got two people behind Exactly. You. And you're looking at it going, well, think about it. There's no draw, right? So the guy's either got a 10 or a 6, or he's right. on a complete block. Now, let's say the guy's not crazy and he's got something. Well, you've got a six and you're way behind. You've always got a ten, and you have no idea if your kicker's any good. Right. And remember, he's firing out into four people. Yeah. So, I mean, you want to take that chance that he's a you know, stone cold bluff, and then all the people behind you don't have a better hand than you, as well. Is it really worth it? You know. Pocket queens over here for seat seven. That's the magician. Twenty-five. He's gonna make it twenty-five to go. And it does not look like he's going to get anybody to play. No, no action for him tonight. Yep. And there it is. Bada bing, bada boom. You know, it's interesting. You know, magicians, they've gone through different phases. It used to be a thing where, you know, the most famous magicians were all these super, you know, gigantic Las Vegas-style illusions like a David Copperfield and stuff right. like that. And now, you know, David Blaine's kind of taken over, and it's more of an in-your-face, up front, figure out how I'm doing this street magic. That's what I like. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. uh, my favorite is the comedian magicians. Yeah. Like, I've always liked Penn and Teller. Yeah. Like, I like that. I like, they're very, they're brash, they're loud, mm -hmm. they're funny, and they're pretty good magicians at all that, yeah. too. Buttons over here in seat one. Seat five is limped in with ace jack of hearts. Seat six is going to limp in with king ten of hearts. And we got ace queen offsuit over there in seat nine. Let's see if he's going to put a little raise in raise here. Raise make it 35. You make it 35. We're playing three five, Dave. So that's seven times the big line. But again, you know, when the stacks are deep, when you've got really, you know, big stacks. Right. It, it, you know, you could say, well, make, he's making ten times the blind size raise. Well, it doesn't really, you know, apply. No, you, do, you got to start looking. You know, when the game starts out, obviously the lines make a big, right? Obviously, are, are, are a factor. But when you start having twelve, thirteen hundred dollars behind you, right? You Three know, players. you don't want to throw in twelve dollars, right? Right. So three-way action here, and look at this. Everybody's hit the flop. 
The pot's about $105, and Jeffrey, the preflop raiser, has the best hand. Let's see if Ace Jack's going to get in trouble here. I look at this, Peter's going to come out and bet here with second pair with King 10. <coughs> see so where he's at. He wants to see where he's at. He's going to find out real quick, I bet. It's only a little bit. He's going to bet 35 into a $100 Now, you pot. think if Peter bets here, which he did, obviously, Jeffrey raises, is that going to save Edward? <coughs> He's going to raise it. He's going to make it 90. Now, the problem here for Edward is that it could be this guy's betting on a 10, the guy's raising with queens or kings. Now, we can see that that's not happening. But do you want to get involved? The problem with the flop is you got to look at this flop and go, what can you beat now? You can't beat ace-10. You can't beat ace-8. You can't beat ace-queen. You can't beat ace-king. You can't really beat any ace except ace-rag. And the guy raised free flop so... Well, he's going to call, and King-10 quickly folds. So here we go. It's about a $280 pot to the turn that turns a three. And this kicker will play, no matter what all the in. river is, unless it jacks. Look at this. Edward moves all in. Yeah, and I'm sure Jeffrey's going to call this. Well, the pot's going to be about 500 bucks. It's going to be a little over 200 to call. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't think you can lay this down here. 96. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough money there to yeah. lay it down. $196. Yeah. Uh, the pot's about 500, so he's getting what two and a half one to his money. Well, could Jeffrey possibly look at it as what can I beat here if the guy's got a real ace? Because I can't beat ace ten. I can't beat ace king. I would tie with ace queen. I can beat ace jack, ace nine. The three really doesn't help. Yeah, but he help just, in he, just he only smooth calls and then he bets. Uh, it's a weird play. I mean, obviously you might not like calling this, but I think you have to call. I mean, he might might be a crying call where, okay, this guy's probably got me beat. He's probably got ace king or ace ten. Once again, and I'm beat. this guy's really close, Dave. We see this all the time on the show. These guys are putting out the chips in front of their cards. Mm. They might have said look time. Look at this. He's, he, he's making it look like he's... He, there it is. Now he's going to call. We see that in the whale game yeah. so often, Dave. It's and like... It, yeah. Just back to ace queen. I mean, ace queen is a very vulnerable hand. What you're saying in terms of, you know, what can he beat? Not much, to be honest with you, except ace jack. Oh, and he's going to take it down there about a... Boy, almost a $700 pot. I mean, to be honest with you, if Edward has a lot more money, you know, if Edward has, say, 600 behind, and he throws a $200 bet in the turn, and then you know you've got to call another $500 bet on the river, ace-queen can hit the muck very quickly. The only interesting thing about that hand is, like you said, the way that the hand played out. You got, you got a smooth call on the flop to a bet and a raise, and then he bets into you on the turn when pretty much uh, a blank. I mean, the three of diamonds isn't going to do anything for that hand comes on the turn, so... But again, th I mean, that's a play that a guy will make with an ace with a weaker kicker when the stack sizes were in that ratio like it was that hand because he doesn't necessarily want to give a free card out. He's going to commit all his chips to that hand. He'll play it that way. And that's why well, I think I, the call with ace-queen is correct. Well, I think that, yeah, exactly. I think that's what Edward was looking at going, well, if I check it, this guy's going to bet 150 and I'm going to call anyway. I might as well be the pusher, which obviously is correct. You'd rather be pushing your money in than calling. Jack, deuce, nine here. And yeah, Jeff's got the best hand here at 9-3. Got checked around. Ace turns at five. Yeah. Yeah. River here is another jack. And Jeff has the best hand here. Yeah, two pair. Obviously, best five cards play. So it's Jeff has jacks and nines with a five kicker. Now, for all you new people that are new to hold them, one exercise that I used to give my wife, and that I actually still do, is I'll often look at the flop and figure out what the nuts is, the absolute best hand at that moment. Because obviously in Hold'em, it's one of the few games where you can always figure out exactly what the absolute nuts is. And, and that is correct, practice, nuts is, as opposed to nuts are, even though it doesn't really sound right. Right. Because nuts is a singular in this, in this case. Now I've got my, uh, my Strunk White <laughs> book of, uh, you know, correct English. Yep. They're at a tournament. Strunk White. I used to, we used to have that book. We, that was required reading in, uh, in writing class in college. Now, Ace King over here in the small blind, and there's a few limpers. Let's see if he's going to thin the field out here a bit, and he does. He's going to raise it up to 25. I think he's going to take it down, and he does. Um, I'm going to use tonight, actually, as a new kind of feature. Okay, and every once in a while when I get books in here, when we get books, and we get the chance to read them, I'm going to try to do a, a little review on them. And I've actually read this book here. It's uh, actually by Penn Teller, you know, by Teller. Yeah. Penn, uh, Juliet. 
and it's How to Cheat Your Friends at Poker. And it is a great book. Highly recommend it. It's actually, it's not really a how to, you know, how to learn how to play poker, how to get better at it, but it is a fabulous book, really funny, well written. Uh, I got it for Christmas, read it over the holidays, and it's really a good book. So I highly recommend it. Once again, How to Cheat Your Friends at Poker by uh, Penn Gillett and Mickey D. Lynn, and it's The Wisdom of Dickie Richard. Check it out. Howdy, you pushing us around, nine. And we've got a raise here by seat nine. He's got ace six off suit. And uh, Jack nine here is calling the flop comes out. Deuce four eight with a couple hearts. Jeffrey's going to make a continuation bet here. He's probably going to take it down. <laughs> And I do not think that Jerry's going to get involved here, Dave, and he does not. And just as a further feature with these books, what I'm going to try to do is, in my Under the Gun column, on Live at the Bike, Under the Gun with David Tuckman, you can uh, read my book reviews, and I'll just touch on them here a little bit, but uh, just go to liveatthebike.com and you can read them. Cool. Do you prefer the... You want a hand player? No. It's a little bit of two to five. Either way. What did you prefer to know? Yeah. Want to be dealt in right behind, right behind the button? Just dealt me. All right. Seat five here, He's already new signed. player, going to be Sylvester. So I'm looking at it, Dave, and uh, yeah, we are on full contact poker, full force, so we're going to try to follow both threads from now on okay. as much as we possibly can. We do apologize. Obviously, most of you are expecting the whale game tonight, yeah. and we try to keep to our schedule, but unfortunately, most of the whales are either at the Rose Bowl or in the Bahamas. Right. So. Chip holder and, and a no, holder I've been trying to figure that out. I don't know. It was fun for uh, Ken and James to stop by last night. Yeah. Great. He looked in, in good shape. He was headed off to uh, Australia for the Aussie Millions. Again, I mean, if he thinks, I asked him about it, if he thinks his schedule's going to be busy now, wait till, uh, I mean, people know him in the poker world, Dave. I don't really know how many people actually watch, you know, there's so many poker shows out there. I don't know if the average person, you know, watches GSN Poker Royale that's not necessarily a hardcore poker fan. Right, no, you're, you're but a lot of people watch the WPT and when he gets on there during Legends, he's going to be you know, a face that people are going to stop yeah, well, out in public. The know? average Joe that doesn't really, really play right. poker that much, plays once in a while, doesn't actually know who wins these World Poker Tour events until right. the, they get shown. Right, right. And I know his isn't going to be shown until March 8th or somewhere about that. I mean, it's amazing how far poker's come in terms of you know, pop culture and these people getting recognized. I mean, don't you think if Evelyn Ng were to walk down the street or walk into a movie theater, a lot of people would recognize her? Yeah, sure. And she hasn't really done that much. Which Evelyn's course, done nothing. Which, of course, you know, She's done nothing. I think mean, it's yeah. one of the reasons. Yeah. One of the reasons Shirley has actually left us and gone to the tournament. I, I think it's great what she's done. I mean, yeah. Well, she's, she's finally smart. gotten fed up. She's looked at. Yeah. She looks at Cloney and she looks at Evelyn. Right. And, and nothing, nothing to, to short either one of those players. Right. But. Shirley is twice the player that both of them are. And, and I'd love to see her, uh, you know, finally get the recognition. Right. Four-way action here. Set of fours over here for seat seven. Uh-oh. Oh, and, 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 oh, seat and David's one. got two pair. He's got top and bottom. Wow, the guy was a base five. four there. One. He's going to bet 35. It was limped around. Now, David's got about $200. And uh, Steven obviously has uh, about $200 all. And I can't imagine all the money not going in on this one. Is he just going to smooth call here with bottom set? It is a little bit connected. He uh, does have position. With king ten of clubs out there, you got straight draws, you got flush draws. You cannot just slow play this one. And he's going to race this. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I was and he's say, put enough money in there that he's pretty much pot committing himself, and I don't think David can get away from that. I, I'm sure that David's going to come back over the top all in. Seventy more. Seventy dollars more. Here. Although we saw David quickly throw away. Remember the flop was ten six six. He quickly threw away jack ten. I think this is this one's a little bit different. Now this pot was limped around, so you yeah. know sometimes you want to stay, you know, avoid going broke. Well, you, you start thinking of the pot. hands that he might have. You go, okay, well I can't beat king ten. He probably doesn't have a set of fours because I have a four. Okay, he probably doesn't have a set of king because it wasn't raised, and I have a king. Yeah. So the only two hands that you're really scared of here are king ten and a set of tens. Now the other thing too is, you know, an action killer. If Stephen had played this hand slow, I mean the stacks are pretty pretty small, but you wouldn't want to see a 10 come, because David might release his hand, or a club, maybe even a queen or an ace if you thought the guy was semi-bluffing. Oh. There are a lot of cards that might not look good if you had king yeah. four. That there are a lot of reasons not to slow play, and many yeah. of them are not necessarily to protect your hand, but it's to protect your action. Right. We say that all the time. 
and give David credit for really thinking about this. And that's, but it's really going to be hard for him to get rid of this because you got to look at it and go, well, the guy didn't raise preflop, so he probably doesn't have tens. He might, probably not. So the only hand you're really scared of is king ten, right? Which would be top two pair, and obviously he'd be in bad, bad shape there. I mean, he could be making this move with some sort of straight draw and a flush draw, a pair and a flush draw. Of course he could. I mean. Yeah, that's just bad luck. I mean, the case four comes out. I guess it couldn't be a pair and a flush draw, not from what the cards are out there, but... Well, ace four clubs. Well, Dave's got the four clubs in his hand. Oh, so you're right. Yeah. There you go. He just calls, Dave. He just calls. So here we go to the turn. Turn's a deuce. Yeah, it's not going to change anything. I don't think that David's going to be able to get away. I mean, there's not that much money here. Nah, He's going to move all in. Give David credit for at least thinking about yeah. it. But, I, I mean, he, that's, just, that's just bad luck for him. The case four comes out and really kills him. He's and he really is thinking about it. This is amazing. And I he needs a king. Oh, and did he call? Yeah, yeah he, he did call. call. He, need, he needs a king here to win this hand. Yeah. King. King, king and, and only, only king, yeah. So here we go to the river. Rivers and ace. Not going to do it. And Steven's going to pretty much double up there. About a $400 pot. Yeah, that's pretty rare when somebody flops a set and someone has two pair with one of the set cards. Uh, it's, uh, what are you going to do about that one? I guess that's a trick in itself, the fact that that card is stuck to his head, Dave. <laughs> he said he's going to do a trick for us at some point, so. We'll look forward to that, Dave. You know, I think that actually that's a great way to meet chicks as a single guy. I think da David Blaine got laid a lot. I think he uh, he was with Madonna for a while. You yeah. want to know the best way? <laughs> the best way to meet chicks? What's that? Be a dog trainer. Thirty. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Be a dog trainer. <laughs> the best way. Thirty dollar raise here by Jeffrey. Well, Jeffrey seemed to have raised a lot in position. Queen nine, little marginal hand, but he's going to take it down. Table is not playing extremely aggressive or anything. Jeffrey's so. using his stack too. Jeffrey's got a lot of money there. Yeah. You know, he's got well over, probably close to $1,000, and he's using it. Yeah. Why not? Now, tomorrow night, we probably will have our $500 game, which is a no-limit game, $500 minimum buy-in, unrestricted buy maximum. That's right. Uh, the blinds are 5 and 10 in that game. And then Friday, obviously, is our big our big Friday night game, which will be 10, 20 blinds. $15 raise here by C5. We can't see what he has. He's, he's going to open here. It looks like in second position. And that is Sylvester. He was on the show last night. He's got a king-10 offsuit. Pocket-5 is going to call him over there in seat-7. Seven. 7-5 seven, suited in seat-8 calls. So we're going to see multi-way action here. And it looks like the small blind's in there with king-10 offsuit as well. So here we go to the flop. Ace-8-8. 7-5 eight, eight. of spades has a flush draw. Pocket, yeah, nobody else is anything, huh? Pocket-5 is the best hand. Let's see if Sylvester's going to, if he's going to bet here on the ace. No, he's going to check it, Dave. If he bet, you probably, you know, I don't know if Victor would have called with the flush draw, but uh, he's going to bet the flush draw now that it gets checked. Well, he's in position. Why not bet that, huh? And he might just take this one down right away here. Well, he I don't, yeah, I don't think anybody can call this. I don't, I mean, it's not a huge, huge error. But I, I don't really know what you're trying to accomplish by, say, making a mini raise with king-10 offsuit in early position. I mean, isn't that a really tough hand to play out of position? I mean, what are you going to do with that? I, I, I agree with you 100% you know, there. And look at uh, Mike in the print. What is that? Mike quotes? Is that his real name's not Mike. It's Mike. <laughs> $1,300. Victor, uh, Jeffrey's got $1,100. So a couple people with over a grand here at the table. Yeah, this, this, is, a, this is a pretty big game. This game can play really big. Uh, and it's and it's really a great game to get in if you have a thousand dollars in a game like this or seven six seven hundred dollars in a game like this. The blinds are only three five and the implied odds are huge. Yep. Pocket tens here for Sylvester. He's going to bring it in for twenty under the gun in seat five. A call over there by the magician with six seven suited. Here we go. Heads up. Yeah, about a fifty dollar uh, pot. Two players. Ace, queen, eight. Not a great flop here for 10. Let's see if Sylvester's going to fire heads up. Oh, he didn't. He checked it. And, uh, excuse me, he is going to bet. It looked like he had pointed at the table. Oh, okay. He bets five. <laughs> and he's going to take it down. 
Yeah, if it's not a good slot for pocket tens, it's a worse slot for six, seven spades. Once again, we are live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with Bart Hansen. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at liveatthebike.com. Or you can follow a live thread. We try to keep the show as interactive as possible. Follow up there. You can go to 2plus2.com or you can go to Full Contact Poker, uh, Daniel Negrano's site. And if you need help finding that link, just go to liveatthebike.com and click on it. You know, Else, Dave, you know, if you go to livethebike.com, I think we have a new f feature. If you if you click on the uh, left hand side towards the bottom, the bottom link is like a poker news, you know, kind of current events, up to date, you know, what's going on in the world of poker. So you can click oh, that's on that cool. and, and check it out. That's great. This one's gonna get magician yeah, race. I mean, I tell you right slip. now, right now there's so much going on in the world of poker. It's really hard to keep up. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. And again, for everyone tuning in, you know, we're not doing the whale night because we don't. The players are either in the Bahamas or at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Um, just this week, don't everybody panic. Hey, you know what's funny? You were talking about the Patriots, obviously playing on Saturday. Your your, your beloved Patsies, and um, you know, Tom Brady actually kind of like he tried to play the respect card. You know, saying how the Patriots I get heard no about respect. That. I didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't really hear his comments. Somebody told me about that. And I mean, I love Tom Brady, but I don't really, I don't necessarily really buy that. I mean, God, I, mean, yeah. actually, I think that was the biggest joke in the world. He, they get no respect. Now this is interesting. Pocket nines on the button. And, uh, 25 to go. Yeah, pretty straightforward. And I think he's gonna take this well, down. See, nine limped in here with six three offsuit from up front. Yeah, but and Jeff is pretty much, you know, he's one of the tightest players you'll ever meet. I mean, by the fact that he checked down the set of seconds on the river there. Yeah, that's a little. I think he left some money on the table on that one. Um, but anyway. The funny thing is he's, he's playing this respect card the pay, that the Patsies get no respect. Come on, the Jaguars have won 8 out of 9, have 12 victories, and are a 7.5 point dog. Yeah. Talk about no respect. You know, I happen to think the Patriots are going to win the game, but I mean, if you're going to play the respect well, card, come on. That's a lot of points. That's a say. huge amount of points yeah. considering the Patriots really play good defense. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, the Jacksonville Jaguars play good defense. I mean, it should be a relatively low-scoring game. we got a $20 raise here by seat nine. He's really opening his game up. He's got queen deuce suited. Like you said, he's trying to play a stack, but seat two's going to mini re-raise to 40. He's got cowboys there, pocket kings. Yeah, I love them. I love using your stack when you're in position, but raising with queen deuce in early position, what are, what are you trying to get there? And he calls jack eight seven here. Maybe he thought he had two queens instead of... Two queen. He's going to check, and seat two is going to bet here. And Jeffrey is not going to get involved. Let me ask you a question. On a position here, you make a raise with queen deuce suited. You get a tight player that comes over the top for a mini raise. Well, now there's $60 in the pot, and it's 20 to call. Do you ever lay that down on a position for the mini re raise? Or depends how much money you've got, but if the guy in seat two's got enough. You really have that much money, though, in seat two, and maybe, maybe yeah. 300. Yeah, well, then for 20 more, you're getting three to one on your money. Um, like I don't think you look at it as three to one in your money. You look at it as you gotta look at it as twenty dollars to win how much in his stack. So right. Well, you're getting three to one right away plus right. implied odds. Right. Right. So twenty to maybe win. But I mean, what are you trying to hit with Queen Deuce? Obviously, it's gonna you're be trying to hit to deuces. You know, you want yeah. deuces. You want you want two deuces. I mean, obviously this game is, and we get a forty dollar raise here with pocket jacks in seat one. I mean, that's the kind of hand that can break kings. I mean, if the flop comes out, you know, deuce, deuce, seven. Yeah. Kings aren't getting away. But obviously, again, I mean, obviously it's a long she, shot. Yeah, it's such a long shot to say break the hand queen do suited against an overpair as opposed to maybe a suited connector where you've got that straight possibility like a five six. No, I'm with. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't play queen do right. suited, and I'm right. certainly not going to raise with queen do suited out of position. Right. You know. But if I'm in that spot and I'm only, you know, sixty dollar pot and twenty dollars to call, yeah, I'm probably going to call. And David takes it down there. Um, yeah, Dave. I mean, my my, you know, ideal situation in the uh, in the playoffs, Dave, where obviously you know the Patriots for them to win, but uh, I want to see Pittsburgh knock off Cincinnati and then oh, go. look at Ed. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, there's Ed. There's Ed playing in the thousand dollar game tonight. I want to see Pittsburgh knock off Cincinnati and then go to Indy and either beat them or beat them up physically. Like a 35, C5. $35 raise here by Sylvester. He's got ace jack off suit. And he's going to take
shake it down. Yeah, email here from problem. Skip C talking about running it three times. He wanted to know, can you uh, can you explain exactly what happens when they run a hand three times? Is there a bet each time, and if so, how much? Thanks, Skip. Uh, well, Skip, obviously, we actually, that happens all the time, so we decided to answer that on our website. Right. So go to liveatthebike.com and just click on the section. What, what is it exactly? The link that says... Uh, how to run it more than what's going on when it runs it more than once? Yes. Okay. And, um, but obviously they're running it more than once. There's no extra money involved. It's when both players are all in already, and they're running it more than once to hedge their bets. Uh, basically each pot is split the number of times they run it. So if they run it twice, the pot is split in, you know, twice in half. And if they run it three times, the pot is split in thirds. And actually, Dave, it's, uh, you can click on the, the uh, little item at the scene at Live at the Bike, and that okay. will tell you about running it three times. Which in the scene at Live at the Bike is on the left-hand side. Click on that, and then you can go to the running it and figure it out. Now, David here, he's going to bet out with queen six. Uh, he's got nothing. Victor's got an ace. And Victor's going to make the call. And we are, actually, it's Jeffrey who made the bet with king four. Victor makes the call. Turn to nine. Victor still has the best hand here. And now Jeffrey is going to check and Victor is going to bet. Now I can understand, you know, well, if Jeffrey wants to use his stack size to push people around, you just can't go overboard, dude. This is not a tournament. You don't need to accumulate chips. And look at that. He's trying to mix it up with a guy that actually can bust it. Not him. Right. But you know what? That's the time to actually mix it up because that guy's got enough chips where it's scary for him. You know, if you mix it up with a guy that only has $200, I I well, oftentimes the guys that only have $200, right. after they put 50 in there, they go, nah, what the hell, it's only 150 more. Right. But that guy, if you were to raise him there pretty big, I think he releases Ace Deuce. Yeah. Actually, it's seat five, Sylvester, ace, queen, suited. And he gets called by pocket sixes. It looks like the magician called here with ace, rag, suited. And Jeffrey, I mean, is he pulling out me raising chips here? He's got jack five off suit on the button. And he's going he's gonna to re-raise here. 200. Dave, he is really, really pushing hard. 200 more. And there's about $110 in dead money here in the middle. Who said 200 more? Seat, seat, seat 9, Jeff. Well, that's the way to use your stack well, there. I mean, he hasn't really... It, I mean, we see that he's getting out of line, but nobody at the table knows that. Well, I guess not yet. You know, and, and, and ace-queen looks really bad when it's your, for all your money. I mean, he's really playing super, super aggressive. And if he takes this down, again, he took down about $100 in dead money. Hey, sometimes when you've got a big stack, that's the way to play in this game. Um, you know, if you play it really aggressive, you can often... And I, I, don't, I don't think any of these players can call this. No. Again, I... Because I mean, Peter, Peter's got... See, this is the scary thing. When you only have $200, right. okay, maybe you gamble with Ace-King right. or something like that. Right. But when you have 500 okay, what are you going to do? Call 200 and then what happens to the flop? Right. You know, and you're out of position... I mean, the one thing I like about Jeffrey's play, at least he's in position. I just don't like it when he does it out of position. Well, I think that he might be dry. I mean, you said, I don't know if you necessarily know if people are privy to what he's doing at the table. But again, this isn't a tournament. There's no rush to accumulate chips. I just think he, he might be going overboard here a little bit, David. He's just going to oh. get picked off at one time. Well, definitely. You know? Obviously, he's definitely going overboard. I mean, yeah. he's risking $200 to win 110 Right. I mean, obviously, that's, that's not sound poker. Um... But it does illustrate the fact that you can use your stack. We saw, I mean, on a, on a higher, on a bigger scale, we saw uh, Robert John Bolande do it in the big game last Wednesday yep. when he won about $45,000. He used his big stack to push around everybody. Yep. And it works. And it works well. And in a game like this where you can only buy in for $200, if you've got 1000 hey, yep. you can really work it. And there's $110. Hey, take it down. free money. No, no flop. No nothing. Right. He just takes it down. And if you can take, if you can get some free pots like that, you know, free 110 here, a free 50 there, a free 50 there, it enables him to kind of mix it up with some other hands. Right. Yeah. 
So the button's gonna move over here to C1. I'm gonna CW Siggy actually wants to know, why do we need two threads? <laughs> and I gotta be honest, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I wish it was all on one thread. Right. You know, one huge thread. Obviously, it's harder for us to follow two threads, but... Well, we were actually so thinking... So be it. What are we gonna we do? Were, we were actually thinking about, I don't know how some of the people on 2 plus 2 feel about this, that we were gonna do our own thread on our website, but it hasn't really come around yet. Yeah. I don't know if there'd be a, a somewhat of a revolt to that idea, but... We get six-way action here. It's limped around 8-6-5 with a couple of clubs. 8-6-5, huh? Yeah. Okay, interesting and, flop uh, there. Looks like Steven has the best hand here in seat number seven. 50. Well, no, I think Jeffrey actually has best hand, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he's got 4-8. He's got a gut shot and top pair, and he's going to come out and bet 50. Yeah, now, Jeffrey's actually got a decent hand here. He's got 10-9. He's got over cards with a gut shot. Right. And if the 7 were to come and anybody has a 9, he can make a lot of money on that because he has the nut nut straight. Absolute tops. Oh, but no, everybody folds call. it, and Jeffrey takes it. I'm sorry, Jerry. All right, players, thank you very much. So Looks like Brian is uh, getting out of the box here. And Greg's going to come in. Button's going to move over here in seat right. two. Let's do it. I would like to come in second. I wonder what Russ McGinley thinks about uh, about the Jacksonville Jaguars' chances in New England. Got to watch those people that live in northern Florida. Pure trouble. Again, the button moves over here in seat two. Pocket seven's over here in seat eight. Magician's got king deuce suited. He's going to limp in. And he's just going to limp in as well here in seat eight. Seat number one's got ace six offsuit. He's going to call. And the button's going to call with three four offsuit. Blinds are going to get a free ride here. Actually, small blind didn't even complete. We got five way action. Five times five, twenty-five dollar pot. Here we go to the flop. Ten, five, three here, and looks like pocket sevens has the best hand right now. Let's see if Victor's gonna fire out. Probably should with just one over card. He's gonna bet twenty-five. Twenty-five. The only real other person that got a piece of this was Jerry with bottom pair. I don't think he's gonna get involved. He does not. And looks like Victor's going to take it down there. There it is. Lots of chips out there for a $200 no limit game. Looks like Victor might have maybe $1,250 or so. Getting word that the magician is actually going to do some sort of trick for us, and we're going to cut away at some point to him uh, doing, I, I guess, a card trick or a chip trick or something. So, I'm I guess sorry. we're going to do that right now. Okay, David Tuckman on the floor of the Bicycle Casino with the magician, Stephen Wood. Um, his poker game's okay. Let's see how his, uh, his, his card tricks are. All right. Now, some magicians can tell the cards apart by the faces, which is a good thing. You can find one who can't run the other way. Okay. Some magicians can tell the cards apart by their backs. I, meanwhile, can tell the cards apart simply by their weight alone. Wow. Six players. Oh, okay. I, I thought you might be impressed by that. I'm impressed. Okay. Uh, okay, good, good, good. I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. We'll mix these up a little bit. I'm going to need your hand in just a second. Okay? I'm going to feel that. And the top eight feels like the ace of spades. Uh, I'm right. Okay. Now let me sh explain to you why this works. If you hold your hand up for a second. See, the black ink in the deck is actually made of a carbon-based ink. So it's actually heavier than the red ink in the deck. Really? Now, now, yeah, for instance, okay. now if I put that ace of spades in your hand, now do you feel the weight of that ace of spades in your hand? That's pretty heavy. I hope so. I'm pushing down real hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's what I'll do. I'll take the other ace and I'll put that underneath. Now what we have is a very interesting situation. We have the uh, heavier ace of spades, and the, I mean the lighter ace of spades, and the, the heavier ace of spades, and the bottom of the lighter ace of plus. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wave my hand, just cast a shadow over those cards, and the heavier ace of spades will rise to the top of the lighter ace of plus. Just watch. Now, did you feel it go? I, I didn't feel it go. Well, whether you did or not, you'll see that the lighter ace of clubs has gone to the top of the heavier ace of spades. Wow. Yeah, well, can you say wow backwards? Yeah, well, I, I can, yeah. And, and that, would be, that would be? That would be wow. Can you say wow upside down? I can't. I'm not that, that would be mom. Can you say oh, wow? Can you say wow upside down and backwards? <coughs> um, that would be mom. Mom again, okay. Can you tell I have no life? No, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no,
Uh, um, um, Stephen, can I see that again? You know, you make a great straight man. Yeah, okay. Go so ahead. go ahead, hold your hand out for me just okay. a second. Let me give the cards a little bit of a mix. And the top. Look at what we do here. Isn't this incredible? I'm missing my pocket aces. I'm making my, missing Magician's my pocket aces. Here. Okay, here we go. I have a, uh, we have an ace of clubs on the top here. Right? Ace of clubs, okay. And I am right. Hold, all right. Put that there. Give it another little so, bit. So of the ace of clubs is yeah. on my bottom of my hand okay. here. And it's, it's pretty heavy. Yeah, and okay. Ace of spades. Look I see that. Ace of spades, right? Okay. Now it's more difficult because it actually is the heavier ace of spades on the bottom. Right, right. The, okay. Ace of spades clearly now, on the bottom. Now here's what we'll do just a little way. Did you feel that one go? I didn't feel it again. Well, I don't, whether you felt it a go or not, you see the heavier ace of spades has gone to the top of the lighter ace of clubs. The fact that you've got the two red aces over that, that's just a gimme. Wow. But that's a, I, I know not wow, what is but it? mom. Thank you very Sorry. much. And that's, sort of, that's a little bit of mom for yeah. all of our internet people with some aces. Mom would be very proud. Yeah, uh, she uh, is. She is. But yeah, although she hates it when we gamble. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot and good luck in the game. Thanks, man. I appreciate Have it. Have a good one. Yep. Back to you, Bart. Well, there it is. Some interesting stuff here. <laughs> Look at this. We're going to hop back into this hand. Victor's got bottom two pair, and Jeffrey's got top pair in seat nine. And these are the big stacks going head to head here. Now, the turn is a ten of diamonds, and now Jeffrey's got a pair in the nut flush draw. But Victor's going to bet 200 here on the turn. I want to say that the pot's about $500, 200 to call. And boy, is this really has the potential to be a big hand here. We hopped right in the middle of this hand after we were doing some tricks there with the magician. So we don't exactly know what the action was on the previous streets. But just getting into it, we see a $200 bet here on the turn by Victor. And Jeffrey's got a pair and a diamond draw. He actually has a decent amount of outs here. If a 10 were to come on the river, he would win a diamond, an 8, or an ace. And he's going to make the call. And the river's a 3, and that's no help. And Vector was going to bet another 200, and uh, wow. Wow. Jeffrey folds, and just like that, I think that Victor took about 500 bucks of Jeffrey's money there. What I was waiting for. You know, it's funny, that trick, it was a little bit difficult to see at first, but at the end there, that was pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, I would have it. pretty cool stuff. Button's going to move over to seat five. Big blind, sir? Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a big blind one. And the well, line is the I'm back. Well, that was pretty cool, Dave. It was a little bit difficult at first to see, but I definitely could clearly see, you know, the last trick that he did there. With yeah, the, the first trick, I didn't really get it either, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. You were right like, there. What's the guy doing? Yeah. I was like, okay. I wasn't even sure if he had put, put the cards the right way. But the second time, that yeah. I, I clearly saw. Yeah. Pocket Ace is over here for seat three. He's going to make it 30 to go. Dave, we just had a little confrontation between the big stacks of the table, and seat eight just took about 500 bucks to seat nine. Yeah, I was standing over him, and I was like, couldn't see the cards, but I just assumed that seat nine, uh, I assumed Jeffrey was bluffing. Well, he, nothing. Well, he actually, and uh, Brantley there, going to take it down there. Um, he actually had top pair ace eight. He picked up the nut diamond draw on the turn. Oh, okay. And, so he actually uh, had something. Yeah, the other gentleman had two pair. Yeah. Okay. But it was bottom two pair, so it was vulnerable right. on the river. Well, I assumed when, uh, when, when Jeffrey bet the 200 and got a quick call, I was like, I, I kind of like caught my attention. And I looked right. over and I was like, oh, what's going on? Button's going to move over here to seat number six. Oh, yeah, it's <coughs> Pocket Queen's here for seat eight. But seat two is going to raise it up here to 30 with pocket tens. So let's see how Queens is going to play this. And look at this, seat six is going to call with Queen, Jack of Clubs. Pocket Queens is in the big blind here, and he is the big stamp. Now, there's he's two gonna... ways to play this hand. You know, if you're Phil Locke, maybe you just smooth call this right. and see if you can hit a big, well, you see if you can hit a big okay, flop, and obviously the more conventional way is to re-raise it and uh, possibly take it down right now. And he's going to raise it up to 130, so 100 more. 100 and this really puts Jerry in a tough spot here. It doesn't have all that many chips. What would this, would this guy re-raise with Ace-King? 
Yeah, but if he's ray raising with ace king, then even then it's like you're 50 50. Yeah. I mean, you, at best you're 50 50. At worst you're a big underdog. I mean, it's and an easy lay down fold. to me. And this guy hasn't really been playing, say, super aggressive. Yeah. If you notice seat nine, if you've really been paying attention, you might think, even though he hasn't really shown his cards, that he might have been a little bit out of line. You might be more apt to push their returns against him. But. And some people, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to disparage what Phil Locke does there. I mean, I have a lot of respect for his game. And to be honest with you, no limit hold'em is a, sometimes about winning those big hands, you know, and trapping people. And, you know, if you're always taking things down pre-flop, well, you're not going to win a big pot there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, in that case there, well, you're putting in a $100 raise. You're only going to get called. Well, I mean, by a rational person, you're only going to get called if you're beat. Right. By aces and kings, that is. And if you get called, then where are you with your queens? Higher than Jack. Higher, higher. Button here is over in seat seven, the magician. I thought he might have come over. 17. And we got a $17 raise here by Sylvester with king rag suit. See, Nate's got Jack-10 off suit. That's Victor. And he calls. I mean, there are some no-limit holding players that almost never raise pre-flop. Yeah. And they're always just looking to flop a monster. Okay, we're heads up. No limit. And here we go. Heads up. Queen, 5-8. Jeffrey's not in the hand. He would have flopped two pair. And Sylvester's got bottom pair. He's going to lead out here. Victor's got a gut shot to the nine. Yeah. Sylvester has a backdoor flush draw. Now, if Sylvester's rather deep, well, he's going to make the call. Victor makes the call, a $30 bet here. And the problem here is where you know you're at. If you're king five here, you're in tough set. But turns a nine, and look at that. It, it gives Victor the straight, but Sylvester's got a flush draw now. I tell you what, you have a queen, it's pretty good. And look at this. Sylvester, Victor checked the straight, and Sylvester's going to pretty much bet all in here. Well, why not take the free card? I mean, obviously, we're privy to the fact the guy just yeah. got the nuts, but <laughs> what is he thinking about here? He's got the nuts, right? <laughs> yeah, well, he's just double-checking, uh, uh, you know? Yeah. Just double-checking. Well, Sylvester's going to need to catch Spade here, or he's going to go broke. Yeah, Spade, and only a Spade here. Now, in, in that case with Jack-10, if you were trying to spike a 9, I don't know. If you were just trying to spike a 9 there, Dave, I don't think Sylvester had enough money for you to make that call on the flop, $30. They only not. make it 122 more, right? right? On what, like a 12 to 1 shot? So. And here we go to the river. The river's a deuce. And again, the way that you work those implied odds problems out, or the way that I like to do it in my head, is if I'm trying to catch my gut shot, and this is assuming that I'm going to get paid off, so you have to factor that in as well. You've got about, you've got four outs, so you have about, you know, you have about, you know, what about a 20% yeah. chance of hitting. Well, not, not even, well, no, sorry, no, no, more like a, like no, it's a, about a 12 to 1, 11 and a half to 12 to 1 chance of hitting it. You know, you've got four outs with about, what, 46 cards remaining Yeah. Um, that you can see. And basically, you want to make about 11 to 1. Now, it's a $30 bet. You need to factor in how much the guy has left. Am I going to get paid off? And how much is in the pot? So if the pot says $300 and the guy's got maybe another 200 left and he only bet 30, well, then you can make the call. Right. But in that case, the pot was only maybe 50 bucks. And then there's also the question of, I mean, let's say it was a nine, a blank nine. Right. You're not going to get paid off at all. Yeah. I mean, well, it just happened to be nine of spades and the guy right. happened to got the flush draw. And to be honest with you, he probably should have taken the free card when oh. you, when the guy bets and you get called, and then you turn the spade draw. Why not take the free Absolutely. card? Absolutely, that's you're power inducing position. a you're inducing a bluff also. Yeah. And if it comes out of spade, you're going to get all you're going to double up there because the guy's not going to see it either. Right. You don't. I, I can't imagine that you would think that king five would be the best hand there. Maybe he was just trying to make a strong semi bluff, but four way action here limped around. I think that's a perfect time when you would when yeah. you would take a free card. Look at this. Jeffrey's flopped a wheel in seat nine. He's going to check it from up front. That's a rainbow there. It's not a scary board at all for him. We got a $20 bet here. It got checked around in the button. And Victor bet with ace three. And Jeffrey's just going to smooth call. Now, the problem here is Jeffrey's been bluffing and been raising a lot. Now that he doesn't bluff, he has something. He just smooth calls. Turn is a nine. Now, the best card in the deck would probably be, say, like another three for Jeffrey Dennis. And Victor's going to bet 50 here. Probably thinks that Jeffrey might just have a single five. Now, obviously, an ace would give Victor aces up, but it would probably be a scary card because if, you know, Jeffrey had the five, he would have the straight. But he already has the wheel. 
and see if he's going to put some more money in here. Yeah, if an ace comes out and Victor makes two pair, you're not going to get any action on him. And he is going to He might not even call this. He's going to raise it to 100. And look at this. Victor calls. Yeah, you know, Victor thinks he's bluffing a lot. And Victor is drawing to a chop here, Dave. He needs a five to chop the pot, and that's it. If a three comes out, he's going to get himself in trouble. The river's an eight. Put a nice little value bet in here, I think. Pot's about, I want to say, 400 bucks here. I think it's time to put at least a good 200 $250 bet in there. If you don't get called, you don't get called. I don't want to show this. He's going to bet up. He's going to bet 200 here, Dave. Okay, there you go. I was going to say, 2 two fifty. put some pressure on him. Yep. And uh, you set it up later and don't show. I mean, this guy has smooth call, check all the flop, check raise the turn, and bet, you know, a good amount hey, on the what river can here. Victor, what can Victor beat here? Well, just a pure bluff. Five king? Yeah, yeah I'm trying to think of a hand that, you know, maybe Jeffrey's in there with. Though. And the other thing, too, is, Dave, the whole, all the time that we've been doing live at the bike, have we ever seen somebody say bluff really big three times with absolutely nothing? I mean, maybe once or twice, the guy makes a check raise bluff on the turn mm -hmm. and then bets the river. Just Although a sometimes stone cold bluff. People do sometimes give away money. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, but I like the fact that you don't show you that you don't show, leave it in, leave it in doubt what you had, and set it up for later. Yeah. Doesn't seem like a lot of people were a fan of that magician, Dave. <laughs> no, no, I. I was trying to play along with the whole thing, you know. Seemed like a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Trying to play along with it, you know. Maybe I should have been wearing a skirt or something. Be the magician's assistant, you know. He could saw me in half. I don't know. Bud's gonna move over to his seat now. He just won that decent pot there. I always get annoyed when I go to a magician show and they get somebody from the audience to like do something with and the guy in the audience tries to like ham it up and tries to like hey I'm gonna be the uh, I'm gonna be the star here okay I always get annoyed at that I'm like okay six way action here you can't see seat nine's cards all hearts on the board it was limped around yeah, Brantley's got the nut flush draw he does 10-8 deuce here and a couple people have top pair Jerry Actually, and like three David people do. Jeff also yeah and everybody checked on the turns a heart well, well, David's made two pair, but obviously it's a fourth heart, and Brantley has the nut flush, and he's going to bet 20. And nobody even has. I mean, what a Jerry has a three of hearts. Now, this is an interesting situation, too. Would you ever call here with two pair knowing that you're beat if the guy, you think, you know, he has a high flush or the nut flush and would be incapable of laying down the hand on the river if you were to fill up and you think you could get all those chips? I mean, it's yeah, a well, unique situation. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you knew the guy was yeah. incapable of laying down the ace of hearts, yeah. if the board paired, well, then you got to look at it the same way you do it. It's a math right. problem. Okay, right. I've got four outs. Right. Um, Can I make about at least 11 times what the guy's betting? So if the guy bet uh, 10 or 11 times, so if the guy bet 20, with his stack and with what the pot is, can I make uh, uh, about 200? But I've got to be really sure that he's got the ace yeah. of hearts. I've yeah. got to be really sure that he can't lay it down. And he's got to have a lot of money. <laughs> Right. All those? Yeah, why not? Right. Especially if it's only $20. I mean, because think about it. I put $20 in there. Right. You know, then the river comes out of five. I've got a full house. Right. He bets another, like, 40, and I come over the top for 600. Right. You know, and, he, and I know he's going to pay me off. Or even I come over the top for 200, like a value one. I mean, he's probably not going to lay that down. Well, who knows? All right. Yeah. $20 raise here by Peter. Although, to be honest, it's actually a pretty easy lay down, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the more and more I think about it, it, it should be an easy lay down. Seat one has moved all in over the top with 10 7 offsuit, and Sylvester is going to call. <laughs> Peter was the one that brought oh, it in with David five was so tight earlier. I mean, he folded top pair earlier. Yeah. And here he's moving all in with 10 high. Well, he's got a couple of live cards here. Yeah, he's going to sell it 60 40 right now. We're going to see a race. For about a hundred and sixty dollars. Right? Yeah, I mean, not, yeah. obviously, uh, yeah. Sylvester's in, in, in good command right now. Yes, well, there's anymore. a ten. <laughs> Sylvester's going to need to hit an ace or a queen, or some sort of running straight here. Well, now he's dead. It's over. It is over. Maybe that's why David did it. He knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, it's wow. weird that you see. Sometimes you see these guys grind it out the whole night, and then they throw all their money away on one stupid hand. Right. You know? <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll spend five minutes thinking about a hand for like $40. Right, right. At the end of the night, they'll have to go, ah, what the heck, I gamble. Right. Major 
The last I hear, I think USC is getting beat. Really? Uh, pretty handily. I think the score is like 16 to 7. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But, buttons moved over here in seat 2. I'm not liking that at all. Got a live shadow here, guys. You know, I, I, I'm not a huge big, you know, I'm not a huge USC fan, Dave, just because there's always some sort of connection to my sports fan history. Now, who's the coach of USC? Pete Carroll. Right. And he drove the Patriots pretty much downhill for a while after uh, ourselves departed. Pete Carroll was the coach of the Jets for a while, too, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, the funny thing is I think Pete Carroll's a great coach and a great guy. I met him, actually, in when I was in New York. college coach. He's a, he's a, to be honest with you, he's a great defensive coordinator with the right. Jets and with right. the 49ers. And uh, once he That's left the Jets and the Patriots, and once he left and went to the uh, USC, I became a USC fan. Really? Because I like him and I respect him. Sylvester straddled here, and we have a raise in seat nine to 25. Jeffrey with a gap-suited connector. I actually think he's a good NFL coach, too. I just think the Patriots and the Jets weren't very good at the time, so he was coaching them. Look at this. Sylvester is going to re-raise here out of, the, out of the straddle spot. And Jeffrey's going to fold. And Brantley had called over there in one of the blinds with ace, nine, and diamonds. So Sylvester is a pretty aggressive player as well. Yeah, Sylvester can mix it up. I mean, we've seen him bluff occasionally. Right. He's going to take it down. So, Magic, was that your best trick that you, that's, that you showed? No, you Hopefully just not. They want him back. They want him back, folks. They're calling him back. He's Sweden. Obviously, we do some experimental things here. The show is live, and we like to keep it like a live. Yeah, every once in a while, we'll mix it up. Yeah. Every um, one, once in a great while. Yeah. Maybe not for the next while, but... <laughs> Button's going to move over here to seat three. Pocket jacks on the button. Couple limpers here. Well, if you're going to get limped around with jacks, you'd think you probably want to thin the field out here, Dave. Unless, like you say, you want to play it slow, but I don't know how you expect nice. to win a big pot if you flop a set of jacks on a limped pot. Yeah, well, this is a different case here. The Queens yeah. earlier were out of position. Right. And if you get called with queens out of position, well, then where are you at? Right. You know, are you getting called by king's races? Now, look at this. we got a $45 raise on the button. And, you know, a lot of mistakes are made pre-flop. The guy up front here in the red hat in seat six, he's calling out of position with six, seven of hearts for $45. He only has about 300 left, Dave. I think yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah, he doesn't have enough money here. Yeah. To be honest with you, the better doesn't have enough money. He only has $300 right. as well, the guy with jacks. See, they call with pocket five, so we got about a $130 pot going three ways. Jackpot. Ace, eight, ace. Jeffrey is not in the well, hand. Well, it could be a jackpot. Somebody said jackpot if somebody actually had an ace. Yep. Obviously, ace is full of tens or better that lose to four of a kind or better is a jackpot. And turn um, is a six. It got checked around. Brantley didn't bet in position on that flop. Wow. Wow. Okay. And now Peter's going to come out and bet on the six. Well, I'm assuming Brantley's oh, No, he checked it. Well, like Brantley's going to bet this now, isn't he? No, Brantley checked it again. And the river here is an eight, and nobody's hand even plays. Look at Victor's card. Victor's cards don't even play. Yeah, Peter and Victor both play the board. And Peter, yeah, Peter as well does not play his hand. Yep. Well, he plays, Peter has a little bit better than the board. That's it. How is that? It's aces and eights. Oh, he's got a seven kicker, He's got a right? seven kicker, that's right, it. Right, right. $50 bet here, and you would think that Brantley's going to. He said he can't call? Are you kidding me? He folded. All right, Jacks. Wow. Well, I mean, maybe if you, but I mean, the, the thing is, is like, well, if you, I guess if you put the guy on an eight or maybe a flush draw, he never bet. The guy could have anything. He got checked twice on the flop and on the turn. That, that might have been one of the worst plays I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that was just, that was just unbelievable. The flop is ace, ace, eight. You're on the button and you check. And you check. I mean, I can't believe you checked the flop, to be honest with you. Right. Then he checks the turn. Right. And then he just throws it away. I thought for a second, I was like, well, let's not hammer him too much because maybe he's inducing a bluff. Yeah. And sure enough, he induced a bluff on the river, right? Obviously, the guy wasn't betting 6-7 thinking he had the best hand. The pot has been raised. Because, I mean, Queen High beats him. Pot's going to be But then he throws here. it away? Raised 30 here out of seat 9, King 5. Man, I mean, it's one thing to be scared if one ace falls. But two aces? 
I mean, do you really think your opponent's going to check an eight twice? Or an ace twice? I just don't buy it. Man. So Jeffrey raised there with <laughs> king five, and he's going to take it down again. He didn't say that. He said he calls I call. Well, mental call note, you know, if, uh, if Brantley Purse ever shows any strength in a hand, go away. Because he's got the nuts. I guess he was just scared that people were slow playing. I don't... Well, if you're going to play scared, man, get up. I mean, yeah. throw a little money in there and see if you I mean, throw $20 in there. See where you're at. Button's going to move over here to seat five. Where's the University of Texas in Austin, right? Yeah. Austin, Texas. King, queen over here for seat two. It's going to limp in in late position. Yeah, they only have two things in Texas. I see them trade Bellagio chips. Steers. But only the big games, yeah. Ah, good game. <laughs> Once again, we're live at the bike, folks, here. I'm David Tuckman here with Bart Hansen. We try to keep the show as politically incorrect as possible. Uh, Steven slopped top and bottom here. And the Jerry's got nothing. And this is what you're talking about sometimes with implied odds. You go, well, if I hit my hand, maybe I'll make a lot of money. Right. Well, not necessarily, because if you hit your hand, how is King Queen going to hit anything? Right. He comes out and bets here, 20 bucks, Stephen the Magician. And Takes it down. He is going to take it down. He shows the two pair there. Shows the two pair. Thank you, sir. Button's going to move over there to seat six. So I guess you expect if the Jets are healthy next year, they'll again be a Super Bowl contender, right? No, they got the new quarterback. Chad Pennington just sucks. He's not good. Why, just because of he's so injury prone, you mean? He's injury prone, and he's really he's only had one good season. I think yeah. they need a quarterback. I'm smart. Ace Queen here for. Uh, I also don't like Herman. Hopefully, Herman Edwards goes to Kansas City, and, and the Jets get a new coach, a real coach. Lots of high Broadway out here. Yeah, I mean, it was every king and every queen is at, is out there, huh? Almost twenty dollar raise here by C two with Ace Jack. C three calls with pocket nine. C four calls with Queen Jack of Clubs. The no, I don't mind. That's a hand there. Some people say, oh, it's an easily dominated hand, but it's a hand where I'm not looking to hit a queen or a jack. Right, right. But it's queen jack it's suited. It's a suited connector in essence, right? And you're in position. Right. And also the reason I like it is if I happen to hit a magic hand, the likelihood is that somebody else has got a piece of it as well. You know what I mean? The flop comes out ace, king, ten. Yeah. Usually that hits somebody else also, and I'm going to get paid off. Well, look at this. The flop comes out ace, four, deuce. The case ace comes off. The pot, Dave, was $120. Steven the Magician comes out and bets $20. Victor raises with Ace Rag. And now it's over to Jerry, who had raised preflop, and he's going to move all in with Ace Jack. Yeah, and once again, Steven has uh, made the case card come out. And Steven folds. He folds the Ace Queen like it was nothing there. Quickly folds. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that's a the pretty tight The pot was $20 fold. times five. The pot's like what? It was $120 preflop. Then he throw in 20. He bet 20. The guy raised to 80. So now it's 220. Now the guy moves in for 150. It's about a $400 pot. 150, 150, to, 150 call. to call. I mean, I don't really know well, what you're scared of there with Ace Queen. Well, the thing but I don't really quite understand either is why are you throwing, why are you only putting $20 into a $120 right, pot with Ace Queen? Right. I mean, Victor's got to think about it now. He's going, wait a second. Right. You now, a lot of times, you know, people might, you know, come out and say, well, you guys talk about easily dominated hands all the time with ace-queen and, you know, ace-jack and that yeah, such thing. But in that particular situation, the guy's committing all his chips. It's really difficult to put him on aces, Dave, because you have one of the aces. No, 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 I think you, you really can actually, I have no problem putting him on ace-king. It's a money issue. Though. Right, right. To be honest with you, the pot is $120. Right. Bet 60 or $70 into it. You're now committed when that guy goes to the top. There's no way you're getting away from the hands. Right, right. Well, this is a money game, you know, and... and, and, and in all reality, in this kind of hand, I have no problem throwing away Ace Queen if the guy's got six, seven hundred dollars behind me. Right. Ace Queen is garbage. But for a hundred and fifty into a four hundred dollar pot, you know you're getting more than two to one on your money. I mean, what hand are you scared of? The guy, the guy raised free flop. The only hand that he has you beat is Ace King, right? If he has Ace Queen, he's got you tied. If he's got Ace Jack, you're beating him. I mean, come on. Lift up your skirt, strap on some balls, Jesus. And Victor is still thinking about it. Well, possibly in the guy's defense there, too. You know, maybe he didn't want to get involved with Victor, because Victor raised. 
his bet. But you're right, it was such a weak bet in the flop. That's what started the whole problem. I mean, to be honest with you, the pot's yeah. 120. I could have do seven, and I'd call. I would call twenty dollars, <laughs> right? In, in Vic, hopes that I spike a deuce or a seven. Well, I mean, Victor did raise the guy when he come out and bet. So. Again, he maybe. bet 20. What did Victor raise? He made it 80. He made it 80, so, and this guy moved yeah, all in. Yeah. Well, I, okay. I don't know. I mean, I, if Victor gets rid of the hand, and Jerry's going to take it down. Right? I mean, you just got to put your opponent on a range of hands, right? And when you have an ace, and an ace flops, and the guy has raised three flop, you got to start going, okay, the likelihood of this guy having pocket aces is very slim. That would be the case ace out there. So what does he have? Now, he raised three flop. He probably doesn't have deuces or fours. Okay. So now, what does he have? What does he be? The only one hand I can think of out of all the range of hands he might have is Ace King is the only one that I'm losing to. You know? And since you're getting more than two to one on your money, actually more like two and a half to one on your money, you got to look at it and go, okay, well, how often is he going to have Ace King? How often is he going to have Ace Queen? How often Ace Jack, Ace Ten, and so forth? The magician has the button here, seat seven. And I think the pot is straddled. I think that's what Greg just said. He's got to take that card off his head already. I know. I figured when I re-raised him, he probably thought I had a date. So I was either, I wasn't going to call you. So either fold or... Well, is the pot straddled here? No, it's not. No, oh, it's not straddled. Okay, we're going to see it limped around. Five players. Five-way action. <laughs> Queen, five, five here. Victor oh. flopped the full house. Yeah, and you know what? David didn't raise with king-queen offsuit in early position. And he's going to get himself in trouble here now. You don't want to go broke in an unraised pot. And, and this is what I, I, I... Well, look at this, though. Jeffrey's going to put out another bluff out here, Dave. He's going to bet right in. King-Queen calls. Uh, and let's see what Vector does there. Well, I assume Sylvester and Jerry are gonna, both going to get out of the hand. And they do. And, and uh, look at this. Victor's going to check raise with the full house. Yeah, it's a small blind. I mean, he could have anything. He's very easy from one five. In this case, he's got queen five. I hear card. He's going to bet 60 more. And I think possibly the reason why he check raised here, Dave. I think that seat one actually quickly got away from the hand. Okay. Um, well done. I think maybe the reason why he check raised there was hoping that someone else might have had a five. Like maybe the guy in seat nine. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how much more money he could have gotten off that. I guess he could have kept betting. But seat one, he's just played it real passively the whole time. I mean, he quickly mucked the king queen. Yeah, but then you'll see him move in with 10-7. Yeah. Very odd play. Um, I mean, I'm, I, like, I like him laying it down, obviously. Unraised pot, very easy for a small blind to have a five there. Now, back to that last night. So the only thing I want to say is the, the mistake beget the mistake. We always talk about that. Obviously, if you bet $20 into a pot, you get raised, and then somebody else re-raises all in. Yeah, one pair is rarely good. Um, but by only betting $20 into a $120 pot, you're basically asking for that. Well, you're not really getting at, you know, the information that you want to see because somebody could make that raise in between with middle pair because your bet is so weak. It's just... Well, wouldn't you think... Let me ask you this. If a guy raises, right, the flop comes out ace blank blank, and he puts a $20 bet into a you know $120 pot, you're either thinking this guy's either flopped a monster or he's got nothing. He's either, yeah, trying to... Or he's scared with He's jacks. either trying to make a little bit of a... You know, move maybe get you off of kings or queens, or and that's a pretty advanced move actually to do that. You don't see necessarily that at this level. So you just put out a little bet that kind of it's like a sneaky bet. Yeah. You know, maybe th he thinks it's kind of like you know bait, or you can actually kind of put out a bait bet, a bet that you want yeah. to get raised. Well, so you're, you're basically you're disguising your weakness right. or you're disguising your strength. Right. You know, strength and weakness often look the same. But in all reality, you had a real hand. C4 is going to make it 25 to go here with ace queen. And we are going to get called here, it call. looks like, in four or five spots. Five spots, so we got about $125 pot. Now, this is once again, now, if you hit the flop, you got to bet at least, you know, a good 60, 70% of the pot. I mean, even up to the pot number. I mean, it's... Now, this was Jeff raising here pre-flop. Again, one of the few times he's raised. And he's in somewhat early position. Here we go to the flop. Well, eight, three, club. deuce, a couple that? clubs. I have a prediction that Jeff's going to check here, Dave. I just don't think he can fire the bullet. Well, yeah. you know what? He's got no pair, no draw. Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, there's two clubs out there. He's got a black, he's got an ace of spades, and a queen of heart. And, and Sylvester. Sylvester's bet 100 here with an open-ended string. And that's a real bet. Well, it's a pot size bet. Exactly. And it puts pressure on people. And no one hit this at all. No one has any part of this. I would imagine he's going to take this down. It's a nice bet. 
I mean, Jeffrey's got a gut shot wheel draw with ace four. Is I, Victor thinking about the five six of spades now? No. Okay. He had a gut shot two to the four. And that that's a real bet there. Yeah. Doyle Brunson likes to call the other one a pine bluff bet. But nice play there. He's gonna show it, Dave. Oh yeah, I do. Shows the semi bluff. Well, you know what? He probably had the best hand there at that point. Open-ended straight draw. Nobody else had anything. You mean you're talking about like the, the highest percentage to win the hand? The two yeah, exactly. Come. Obviously, yeah. ace high still right, the best right. hand. Right. But would you rather have four or five there or ace queen? Button's going to move over here to seat nine. Especially out of position. No. Button is in seat one. Now that Shirley's gone, I might have to go Shirley on you a couple times here, Dave, over the next couple weeks, just okay. to make sure that she's, uh, you know, well represented. Best hand? What are you talking about? Four five. <laughs> well, it's funny. Some people actually go like, they'll go, wait a second, it's not the best hand. Yeah, of course it's not the best hand. If both players were all in in a tournament, and they both turned it over. Yeah, they're not. But right. how do you play ace queen out of position? Right. Guy right. just raised a hundred dollars. Or better way action here. Ace, eight, nine. Jeffrey's flopped the only thing here. He's got bottom pair. And it looks like he's bet $15 here with the king of eight. And the pot's only, I want to say the pot's 20, so. What is Jerry calling with? Is he going to make a move? He's called with jack six of spades. Maybe he's, you know, sniffing out Jeffrey, thinking that Jeffrey's, you know, making a bluff here. Turns a nine. Yeah, if he's making a bluff, what do you got? You got jack six. <laughs> Was he trying to pick up a draw here and make a move on the turn? Well, he's going to check it now. Now, the other thing, too, here, that's actually a, you know, that's a pretty bad card for king eight. Unless you think the guy's on a straight draw, right? I mean, you can't beat a nine. You can't beat an ace. But if you're getting the guy to call with jack six, I guess. Jerry's a nice guy and a pretty solid player. I have no idea why he's calling $20 there. Sometimes people do that in no limit hold them. They'll just, they go, ah, $15? Okay, I'll call. But you have nothing. I know, but it's only $15. I mean, the logic is somewhat flawed there. So I guess Texas is up at the half, Dave. Yeah, 16 to 10. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good game. Interesting decision by Pete Carlisle. Actually, early in the game, they were up 7 nothing on uh, Texas's, say, 25-yard uh, line, 22-yard line, something like that. And they decided to go for it on fourth down. I guess go for the jugular. And they didn't make it rather than keep the field goal. Yeah, I mean, it was relatively, you know, it was like fourth and inches. Yeah, that can make a difference in the difference between fourth and oh, fourth and inches. Five-way action here. Limped around. Queen Jack six. Jerry's got top two pair there in seat two. That's that's a good flop for Queen Jack. I think he's on the, he's on the button as well. Thirty. And we get a thirty dollar bet here on the button. It got checked around to him. Now that's kind of hand. Like I, I emphasize, when you're calling raises with Queen Jack suited, you're not looking for one Jack or one Queen. You're really looking to hit something like that. You're looking to hit, you know, straight flush draws. Big flops. Jeffrey's going to check call here with queen rag suited, and he's in big trouble. Yeah, he's pretty much drawing dead. He says he checks in the dark here on the turn. The turn's a deuce. Yeah, now he is drawing dead. And it looks like Jerry is winding up to bet again here. Pot's about 100 bucks. you got to really play the player. I mean, has this guy showed any type of strength the whole night, Dave, in seat two? I mean, you can't, I just can't yeah, imagine fires, that queen three is Yeah, he fires point. one time on the button. You go, okay, maybe. Yeah. But now he's fired again. Well, you know, it's interesting. Like, like you said, you can pick up on these patterns. I'm not saying that seat one, excuse me, seat nine necessarily had to bet there with queen three. I mean, he did have a couple people left to act. But it's almost like he was checking to play it safe, whereas he's betting his bluffs and checking his marginal hand. Right. Seat nine. So well, most people do that in no limit. I mean, if you're playing yeah. no limit, and what I've seen over the last year watching this is, generally speaking, people bet their monsters, bet their bluffs, check their marginal hands. Right. Yeah. So if, if you can, if, if you're deciding whether to really make a tough call on somebody, if you can eliminate the fact that they have a monster, well, then it may, sometimes makes it a really easy call because you go, well, they wouldn't bet a marginal hand here. Right. And they probably don't have a monster, so they're probably bluffing. Right. You know. 
sometimes you can you can use your logic that way. You kind of figure out the hand backwards and go backwards and figure it out what the guy has. Twenty-five dollar raise here by Victor. Ace Queen of Diamonds. He gets smooth called in seat eight with uh, Ace King of Spades. Actually, so there we Excuse me, Victor raise. Yeah, right? and uh, Peter's got the Ace Queen of Diamonds. He's going to call. And Steven's going to call as well with Jack yeah. ten. It's a five way action. Hundred dollar pot again? No, hundred and twenty five dollar pot. Sorry. Yeah. Nice size pots here. Oh, there's the Ace. And boy, this one might be tough here yeah. for Peter with and the Ace Queen. The, this is the theme of the night. Yeah. I mean, it seems like dominated hands, right? All night, which is the. But listen, this is at least I'm going to give Peter credit. He's going to bet a normal amount. Let's. Uh, well, well, it's only 50 into 120 dollar pot there, Dave. Still a pretty weak bet, I think. Um, Let's see what Victor's going to do here. He's going to mini raise to 100. Now the interesting thing here is, if you're Peter, could you ever come over the top and represent a seven? I don't think he's coming that deep. And what would Victor do? Because you could, if you were savvy enough to play this hand with a seven, you could play it in that yeah. manner, right? Well, he called a raise earlier with six seven, so. Yeah, yeah. If he were to come over the top a couple hundred dollars here, Victor would be put to the test, for sure. But once again, I rather would have seen Peter like let's throw in a nice seventy-five, nine, you know, seventy-five hundred dollar bet there. See where you're at. If Victor still comes to the top on you, well, then you know you're beat. Well, this is another situation, though. Well, you said you're deeper now. If he was short, I think you'd probably need to stay in the hand with Ace Queen because you only really lose to Ace King. But these guys are fairly deep. The pot now is about 300 bucks. Yeah. Turns a deuce. Let's see how this one plays out. And he's going to check it. Wow, and Victor's going to check right behind him. Well, I think Victor's scared of the seven. And the river here is a three. Well, let's see if Peter throws in a little, uh, little bet here. I don't think he can get him off the hand. Well, if Victor checks here... You think that Ace King's good enough to value bet here on the river, wouldn't you? Yeah, Peter. And make, it, Peter make it look like you might even be trying to steal. Definitely. Right? Oh, he's oh, just gonna check it down. Yeah, so you gotta bet that. I think you have to bet the river there. Well, especially when the guy only has 400 bucks left. I, I mean, I, I still think you bet even when you're deeper. But again, you know, this question of how, you know, how good is that player? Would he ever check it twice with the seven and make yeah. a check raise on the river? Probably yeah, I actually not. don't mind the check behind on the turn. No, neither do I, yeah. Because you check behind just to avoid that check raise. And then check guy checks again. You go, oh, wait a second. Well, remember, you, there's also another theme that we've seen with the really advanced no-limit hold'em players on the show. Checking behind on the turn is also a way of controlling a pot. Because if you bet an amount and now he check raises all in, you might somewhat feel committed to the hand, whereas you can make a call now on the river for say maybe only 100 or 150 bucks if he comes out and, bet and fires exactly. out of the Well, you're also inducing a bluff. If the right. guy doesn't have anything, you're, right. you're, you're inducing that bluff. Um, obviously, there's no draw out there. There's a 7 7. I don't think that you can put the guy on, on nothing. I mean, he came out and he bet into six. No, he people. bet and then he called your raise. He right. probably has an ace or a seven. Um, right. But when the guy checks to me on the turn and then checks to me on the river, I got to go, okay, the guy probably has an ace. Probably well, ace jack or ace queen. Right. Whatever. And he's got yeah. an ace and I have ace king, so I'm not yeah. worried about it. And I'm yeah. going to make him pay for it. Yeah, I, I think that that hand was, it wasn't necessarily what you say marginal on the river. I think it was definitely good enough to value bet the yeah, river there. Yeah, no, that is out. Yeah. Pocket aces here for seed six. I mean, you got to make somebody pay for, yeah. you know, that, that kicker thing. you got to make them pay for it. That's, that's a golden opportunity to make your money. Peter's going to bet 40 here. And, and Victor's saying that he was that he was happy with the pot. Well, he was happy to buy it. I'm going, okay, well, I mean, to me, if you're losing money or you're, or you're winning less than you should have won, well, that's losing, too. I mean, you've got to maximize your wins. Peter's going to raise there, and he's going to take it down. It's interesting, though, with the ace-king on the river, as I'm trying to think through my head, what your options are of a bet size there. We always talk about, well, well the pot's 300. Why not bet 150? Well, everybody expects a value bet. If you really think that the guy has an ace and you check the turn and you made it look somewhat like you didn't like the board, could you overbet the river? Move the guy all in. He only had about 380 left, so you're betting 380 into a $300 pot. You could, but the, the, the only thing in that is, overbetting the pot. I think really only works when somebody you you pretty much know that guy's got a monster. You know what I mean? Because suddenly the guy's going, well, this this guy might be bluffing me, but unless the guy you're playing against is really advanced, also, he might not want to gamble $400. And in the end, you do want to get called, don't you? You do. 
I'm just thinking sometimes that reverse psychology move where it almost looks like you're bluffing at it and, and you're right. going to get a call by a weaker hand. I think that, that move can definitely work when you're playing against uh, you know, a real advanced player who, who's kind of in that kind of mode with you. Right. He's thinking, okay, this guy's overbetting. We actually saw a hand like that. I forget the gentleman that did it against Kenna James in one of the whale games. I don't think you were here for it, but... Okay. Uh, basically made it look like he was on a busted flush draw when he checked behind the turn and really over bet the river and got yeah, Kenna James like, to, to make a call with like a second pair or something. There you go. And that's Kenna James, obviously. Yeah. Obviously and look at this. Jeffrey raised preflop, and he's going to bet dark on the flop here. Well, and that'll probably work, huh? Peter's missed. And look at this. Boy, he really likes to raise in early position with inferior hands, Dave. I just don't get and it. And Peter's called. He's called with ace five. Is Peter going to make a move well, Maybe here? he's just trying to use his position to see if the guy can fire again. But now Jeffrey's picked up a draw. He's open-ended now. I just don't understand. If you think somebody's bluffing, you're just calling here? You're going to set up a play later? Well, I, I think that, you know, you can sometimes just call and see what happens on the turn. And okay. There's no limit. He's going to make a bet here. And uh, Peter is, is going to chicken out here, and he's going to fold. Right. And Jeffrey's going to take it down there. With the second best hand. Yeah, and the river would have been a deuce of hearts, and ace five would have won. Now, obviously, calling in no limit, obviously, sometimes it is more powerful than even raising. Right, right. Now, I had an interesting hand the other day. I was playing no limit hold'em where I had flopped, I had king ten, I had flopped top pair with two spades up there. I put a little pot size bet out there. A guy called me, and I was in position on him. He was first to act. The river brought out a third spade. But it also brought out my second pair. It brought out ten of spades. So I had two pair. And the pot's only about $100. And the guy goes $200 right away into me. Right. Now, he turns out he had nothing. And I called him. And I won. But if it was kind of your play where he overbet the pot with the flush, right. you know, I kind of saw it as a bluff. Right, right. And that's where your play would have worked. Now, look at this. We got pocket jacks in seat two. He raised it to 25. And seat three just smooth called with queens. I don't necessarily know if, uh, you know, I, I just think that Brantley's so passive, he's just smooth calling the queens. He's not trying to trap here. Just, you know, kind of, kind of what we've seen tonight all, yeah, all night from that. C3. Well, and look at this, ace, eight, four. Both players have club draws, all clubs. Yeah, Jerry's in bad, bad shape here. But I would imagine that if Jerry bets here, Brantley's probably just going to fold. I would imagine, yeah. I mean, from what we saw well, before Brantley with those jacks against only, aces, Ian. Brantley might only call because he has the queen of clubs. Yeah, it is the second nut flush draw. It's a fifty-five dollar bet here. If it was two red queens, I think I think we'd see that hand in the muck already. Oh, in a heartbeat. Him. And he is going to make the call. Well, the funny thing is, if if Jerry can somehow, if he knew what the guy had, he'd almost turns to three. Check it now. And now Jerry Ooh. checks, and Brantley's going to bet. Wow. And he just bets a tiny bit here. He bets fifty. And you wonder if Jerry's going to take one off because he's got the jacket clubs. Yeah, this is interesting how this hand played out. Small bet. I mean, the pot is how much now? Fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, fifty to call. Yeah, and, and you know, and Jerry might still think that you know possibly his hand is good here, and the guy's just making this bet with a flush draw with a king or a queen here. Yeah. Well, the guy might have called with the king clubs or the right. queen clubs. Right. And now when you check to him, you're okay. I'm gonna bet. And Jerry is trying extremely slim. He has one out here, right, Dave? Yeah. Now you wonder if the river comes out blank. And Jerry puts in a big bet. Will Brantley even call? Rivers is six. I imagine this is going to go check, check. And Jerry actually had two outs, two of the red jacks. Yeah. Check. Yep, there you go. Queens are going to take it down there. And if club shows up, I'm in trouble no matter what. Now that's a case, obviously, where, where we're checking the river, obviously, is not that bad a play. No. Um, because it was very easy for seat two, very easy for Jerry there to have a weak ace. Or even any ace, to be honest with you. I was close to calling him. Uh, and if you didn't think you could get him off the hand, no point in betting. Yeah. I should have. That's like the right guy out. But moves over here to seat nine. Yeah, I still maintain, though, I like betting the river not only for value, not only to make money, but also to deceive what I'm playing. You know? So you don't have to show your hand down. I don't have to show my hand down, and it's also a matter of that we were just talking about it. If I'm only betting my bluffs, and my monsters, well, then it's much easier for people to put a read on me on the river. But if I'm betting some of my marginal holdings also, well, then how do you know if I'm bluffing or not? Three-way action. 
It's actually a heads up action. Steven raised to $15 with ace queen. And uh, Brantley's got a flush draw. He checks it from up front. Steven's going to bet. 25. 25. He's got a gut shot there. And Steven's got a mini raise here. It's a great play by Brantley. I mean, you wonder, Excuse me, Brantley. You wonder what Brantley was thinking with those, with the uh, pocket, was it pocket jacks before? Well, look at this. Steven's going to call here. And here we go to the turn. Turns an ace. Well, that was one of Steven's outs. And Brantley's going to check. And Steven is not going to give a free card. He's going to bet. But but it's only 50, and Brantley's got a gut shot to the queen, Dave, yeah, and queen the club or club. Draw. Queen or club will do it here. Yeah. Now, if it's the jack of club, oh, he actually has the jack of clubs in his hand. The river's a king. And he's going to come out and bet here. He missed everything, and he's going to try to represent 50. here. Top pair, I don't necessarily mind the bet, but he only 50. bet 50 on the river, yeah. Dave. You know what? It's a great bet. I don't think it's enough, though. No, this guy can't lay this down. Can you It's about that? a $250 pot here, 50 Dollar bet You're getting here. five to one on your money. You just got All you have to do is, even if the guy is just bluffing one out of five times, you're going to make money on this play. You got to call this. Remember, he did check raise the flop though. Right. He did represent the king, and the king on the river. I mean, obviously, it's easy for us. We're in the booth. He's going to make the call. But the bet's only fifty dollars, and that's why he's going to call. Yeah. It's a crying I call. You say all in. I said all in. I got nothing. I can't call you. Well, Steven actually moved all in on the river, Dave. Well, I, I don't know. I moved don't, all in? That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Wow, I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> to be honest with you, the way this guy played the hand, remember, he check raises the flop. Right, right. Okay? Representing a king. Then the ace comes out, which is obviously a scary card. You check to him. He, Steven's going to bet. The king comes out, and he bets. You go, oh, okay, this guy's obviously got a king. He's right. now got trip kings. And if he bets a, num a, 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 good amount, a good amount of money, it's actually a pretty easy lay down. But when the guy only bets you 50. You know. The other thing, too, is that Steven had only 100 left. So it's not even really, you know, an issue. Well, how much do I have to really bet? The pot was 250. If you're going to make that move, I think you need to bet pretty much his He's entire bet the whole stack. Yeah. Now, I, I think Steven just said, I want to go home. I move all in. But that's a clear case on the river where there would be absolutely no reason for you to race there on the river. No, that was just a frustration race. Yeah, yeah. He actually said it. He goes, I want to go home. Right, right. Figured the guy said he figured he had a king and he's going to call me. I want to go home. Seat six has got pocket kings. He's going to race to 30. Well, I hope he makes a living. I hope his his, uh, his uh, magical career takes off. Well, he, he just actually mucked pocket eights here. He doesn't have a lot of money to a $30 raise. So seat eight uh, calls queen 10 suited. Look at this Brantley's in there with four three off suit. Well, three-way action here. Ace, six, seven, all clubs. He just yeah. got the nut flush draw here. Yeah, it's not as bad a flop normally as, you know, kings. You never want to see that ace, but that's not that bad. And he should probably bet and take it down here. He did, though. He checked. Wow, he checked And it. Victor betted. Victor's going to bet 20. 20 into a $90 pot. Boy, that's a weak bet. Yeah, and Victor's almost, I mean, Victor's almost drawing dead here. <laughs> I mean, he needs run or run or something, right? That's right. Run or run or something, and he needs to avoid a club. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's in really bad shape, and he doesn't have any clubs in his hand. Yeah, I really hope Peter is, c is contemplating: do I do I raise or do I just call? And he's going to raise it up here. Well, it's actually it was a fifty dollar bet, so it's just a call. Okay. Okay. Pot's now about what two hundred? Turns a five, and Victor is now drawing dead. Now, might you put a little blocker bet in here if you got the king of clubs? If what? you think the guy's got an ace. Let's see how much he's going to bet here. 60. 60. Well, there it is. And that's a nice bet. But the funny thing is is that sometimes, you know, players can easily smell this out. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, and there, Victor's going to raise it up to 160 now. Uh, and Victor's on a complete bluff here. Total bluff here. Yeah. I like the try by Peter, And look Peter, at this. Peter's, I think Peter said call. Peter said call. He's got the king of clubs. It's tough for him to get away from this now. Yeah, and the pot now is about 600 bucks. Here we go to the river, and the river is a six. Now, this is the question here. Now, Peter does not have that much money left. Yeah. If Peter checks and Victor moves all in. Well, Victor has to move all in, doesn't he? Because Peter only has 120 left. He, he might just give up. All, uh, he might just okay. give up at this point. Oh, because he doesn't have enough money to get him off the hand. Well, the pot's $500. 600 Yeah. You know, I mean... Uh, yeah. And he did give up. Yeah, I mean, it's it just because I did, guy didn't have enough money there. 
And King of Clubs is going to... Well, I mean, the interesting question, though, is is that we haven't seen Victor bet out of line all night. If he said that he had about 150 left, if Victor had bet the 150, would Victor have called? Or would, would Peter have called? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's interesting. Sometimes in this game, which is different than some other no-limit games where it's unrestricted buy-in, sometimes you've got to really figure out when is the best time to make a move on a guy. Because sometimes a guy will have a draw, like in this case where he had a king of clubs, and he will call your bluff on the turn. Right. But you bet so much on the turn that you didn't leave enough to bluff on the river. Right. You almost have to, like, plan it out right. And he's also, act if he accidentally ran into some sort of pair, and it's a situation where, like you said, you bluffed a bunch on the river and say the pot's now seven or 800, and he only has 90 left, and he missed his draw, but he hit third pair on the river. He, he, yeah. You know? He goes, well, you yeah. know what? I'm getting the pot's too big. I can't get away from it now. So sometimes you've got to calculate. It's, it's almost like a chess game. You've got to think of in advance the moves. How much is he going to leave? Yeah. Leave him with. Good you know? players will always figure out they've got to figure out, i got to leave a little bit of money left right. for the river to bluff at. Right. And in that case, obviously, Victor had plenty of money, but Peter didn't. And he almost wanted to leave Peter with $200 down the river because you wonder, does Peter call $200 on the river? Now, we, we, we had a raise here by David to 40 with pocket kings. He is in the cutoff there. Pretty straightforward, raising in late position with kings. Hey, what's up here? Now they're, they're going to blow, they're gonna blow that out now. <laughs> exactly. It's I enough already. Well, I don't already. know really what. Well, Peter might be calculating, trying to figure out if, he's got, if uh, David's got enough money to make this call. Obviously. I don't, I don't think David does have enough money. Yeah. Well, let's see. I don't know if we can get a shot of David's chip stack here over in seat one. Yeah, he's only got $170, David, in seat one. Okay. And that's that's a really important thing to look at. Obviously, you might have enough money to make a call. Well, he did make the call heads yeah. up. But if if your opponent doesn't, right. there's no real implied odds here. Well, look at that. He's hit his set. Well, he's going to probably get all his money, Dave. But, again, it, if he knew what David had, it's it's not the right call. And he's going to come out and bet here right into the board here. And David is going to call. Wow, that's a big bet, huh? Well, he put them all in. Yeah. Yeah. And he needs a king. He needs a king and only a king. Well, you could chop it up here with a river. Yeah, you're right. And the yeah. river's a jack, and it doesn't come. The other thing, too, is, I mean, it was David. We haven't seen him raise with anything below, say, pocket jacks all night. But if the guy also raised with ace king, and only now king. you hit your set, and you bet, he's not going to call you, right? Yeah, he did do that with 10-7. Yeah, that, well, no, he, call, he pushed all in with 10-7, right, right. right. But what You're, I'm saying is is that there's a lot of things that have to go right for you to make all his money. Pocket pairs, and that's why we sometimes say, well, the odds of flopping a set are, what, 7.5 to 1, right, on the yeah. flop. But you almost really, I, I mean, it's, it's an interesting rule of thumb to, to almost be like, well, I want to make 10 to 1 on my money. I think that's a good, I think that's a good. It's an easy way to calculate it because it's not the true odds of flopping a set, but the other guy has to hit something or have something to right. get if, hit off. You, if, you have, if you have pocket fives and you're calling a raise and you have a lot of money and he has a lot of money, you want him to pocket, you want him to pocket aces. Right. Yeah, so I mean, you want that because you want to hit your set and make all the money. Right. You know, if he just has ace king and the flop comes out five, four, three, right. you're not going to make any money. I mean, look at it, but he has ace king. You almost, I mean, you almost really, if you know he has ace king, you almost want 15 or 20 to one. I'm saying if you knew his cards, because now not only do you have to hit a set, but he has to hit top pair as well. Right, the flop's got to come out ace, ace, right. five, deuce. Right. You know, I mean. Race here on the button. And then five obviously you got to be playing against the player who has trouble getting away from hands. I mean, all these things have to be. Well, those players aren't really far and few between, Dave. No, no, I know. Yeah. But it's one of those times where, in that case, the raise was, what, 50, right? And the guy only had 170 left. So in that case, you're getting, like, maybe four to one on your money, well, three and a half to one. Jeffrey raised, and actually Brantley re-raised, I believe. Wow, so okay. Brantley is re-raising with ace-jack. Oh, wow, look at oh, this. Oh, my. Jeffrey's got bottom two pair. And I believe we got an all-in and a call. Yep. And Brantley's going to go bust unless he gets some help here. Turn oh. is a queen. He needs a queen, a jack, or an ace. Here we go to the river. River's a seven, and nine five is going to take it. And finally, Jeffrey's going to show some crap. He open raised there with nine five. Brantley, I guess, astutely observing what Jeffrey's been doing in early position with raggy cards, re raised him with ace jack. And, and then Jeffrey just got lucky. Just an unlucky flop for him. Yeah. You know, I mean, you re raise a guy, you hit top pair, yeah. you make the right read, and, uh, you know, and, and you also don't have enough money to get away from it. Let's be honest. Right. 
mean, you can't you can't fault Brantley there at all. I mean, he only had $140. He's not going anywhere. Look at this. We got an email here from Michael. He says, oh. "What's a pine bluff bet? Don't you mean a post oak bluff?" And I do. I stand corrected. Thank you very much. Obviously, once again, we are live here, unscripted, unedited, and obviously we do make mistakes once in a while. I was actually trying to think of what you were talking about, too, there, Dave, yeah. but I just let it go. <laughs> yeah, Doyle Brunson like, obviously talks post, about it in, yeah. <laughs> in his Super System 1, the post-oak block. Right, right. Um, and for some reason, I got my mind on pine. Limp, limp here. Peter's got ace, jack, and diamonds. He's played it pretty tight. Uh, Daydreamer. Let's see if he's going to raise here. I think he's going to raise. Well, three, just two limpers here and small blind, Dave. Most likely probably have the best hand. You're out of position. Yep. He's going to raise it to 30. You know, sometimes you raise there also because you look at a player like seat four, Jeff Len there. If he calls you, you know he's got a real hand. And if he doesn't call you, he's got nothing. And now you get a heads up. Well, Sylvester's called out of position here with queen nine. Well, he's out flopped him. King 9 8 here with a couple of hearts. Let's see how Sylvester's going to play it. It goes check, check. So if Peter's going to take the card, the turn is in 8. Well, that doesn't change anything. If anything, you got to think Sylvester likes his hand now. And he's going to come out and bet. you got to figure if Peter had a king, if Peter had a king, he would have bet it. And the likelihood of having an 8 now are pretty slim, so his 9 is probably the best hand. Sylvester's come out and bet 50 bucks here on the turn. Peter's going to get away from it. You have kings this time? Kings going Obviously, at Live at the Bike here, we try to mix it up. We try to give you a variety of all sorts of games. Monday night, we had Limit Hold'em. Last night, we had a three to 500 No Limit game. Tonight, we're giving you a $200 game. Uh, next Wednesday will be the Whale game again. And obviously, Thursday and Friday are going to be our bigger games. Friday, there'll probably be in excess of $30,000, $40,000 on the table. So make sure you don't miss that one. And you can catch us Monday through Friday, every Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 p.m. Well, Victor has steadily increased that chip stack. And I want to say that Jeffrey's down a couple hundred bucks. Victor might be up about yeah, maybe six or seven hundred. And again, there's a lot of chips on the table for a $200 game. If Victor and Jeffrey get tangled up, man, this is a $200 game. That's a lot of money. A couple thousand dollars in the pot, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I know some guys who the five, the, in the $500 game, the $510 game, they only buy in for $500. Right. Yeah, this game gets real a lot of fun actually. The two hundred dollar game gets real fun when you have like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars. It's gonna be limped around here. Especially if you have a table that's fairly loose passive, Dave, and you can see a lot of flops for cheap. Oh, it's great. Four five eight here, all clubs. Now Victor's got eight six. Yeah, not a bad flop for Jeffrey there. He's got the he's got a gut shot straight flush draw. Plus he's got yeah, only one overcard with sixes, but obviously Victor there has eight six and yeah, ahead of him. Jeff and seat four's got the nut flush draw here with the ace nine. Yep. Now if the seven of clubs were to hit off, we wow. make it fireworks. Jeffrey's gonna bet thirty. And again, you know, Jeff and seat four is really, really tight. If he calls here, boy, you really can think he's got either the ace or the king of clubs. He's I don't even think he call. calls it the king, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I mean and Victor's still in here. He's got 8-6. He has the best hand right now. Now, he's got a top pair and a gut shot. Do you want to get involved here without a club in your hand? Well, though? to be honest with you, I think you're either going to either get a raise or fold situation as far as I'm concerned. You don't want to just call. I mean, if you're going to call, you're waiting for a safe card. But half a deck is a dangerous card for you in this case. I just think you can find better spots. Uh, no, I, I, I have to agree with you. I mean, I, I would probably fold it as well, but I'm saying you're going to raise your fold back. You don't want to give him any free draw. Oh, here we go to the turn. Turns the seven of clubs, Dave. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Now, Jeff is not a bad player. Let's see if he And it goes check, check. Check, check. Holy smokes. Oh, wow. Let's see how this works out here. You've got to think Jeff's going to raise at least once. Yeah, he's got the absolute nuts here. So let's say, does Jeff bet, and then Jeffrey bets, Jeff raises, and then do you move all in with the six of clubs? And look at this. It's a $90 bet. Uh, Jeff's going to make it 200 and what is Jeffrey going to do here? i got to be honest with you. This is actually a bad raise. Obviously, we're privy to the cards, right. but it's a bad raise because king of clubs shouldn't even call this raise. Right. So you're not going to get called unless you're beaten, and there is a hand that can beat you. Yeah. 
Holy smokes, what a turn card. $90 bet, $200. And he's going to check it again here. Just double check, make sure yeah. he has a six of clubs Pot's in Pot's about 400 bucks. And he's going to come back over the top for 500 And And Jeff is just going to call, Dave. He's just going to call. Oh. Yeah, you had the six of clubs. He even said it. You yeah. had the six of clubs. Wow. I called, you had the six of clubs. Uh, yeah. And that's the reason you don't do it in no limit hold'em. Yeah. Everybody at home can go, well, come on, the guy's got the ace of clubs. What do you expect? You're just talking about value racing. Right. Wow. But there are times where... If yeah. you're playing against a good player, and you make a nice value bet in the river with, say, the queen of clubs or the king of clubs, and you get raised, you can throw it away. You know you don't have the nuts. The guy's not going to raise you with, like, you know, nothing. And you can generally throw the cat in hand away. Now, I think this guy in seat kind of left some chips on the table here, Dave, because look at that. He, he, he made it 500. Why wouldn't you just put the guy all in? Yeah, well, I guess he didn't He didn't realize it. He just grabbed one oh, stack and okay. was hoping he got called. I mean, Jeffrey immediately called. But yeah. you're right. Unless you're against an absolute lunatic, there are those special circumstances where there isn't a value in raising. Sometimes you see it also when you have top full house on a double paired board and somebody bets into you. But there's a hand that can beat you, like, say, bottom quads or maybe a full house with a higher kicker. There's really no reason to raise there when you're playing, because you're never going to get called. Yeah, right? when you're playing deep, no limit, hold yeah. to be honest with you, there is no point in raising. Now, obviously, if I'm playing against like a guy like Ed or I'm playing against Jesus, yeah. somebody like that, yes, I'm going to raise with the ace of clubs. And if he has a six of clubs, so be it. Right. But, you know, this guy, Jeffrey Madsen, has been pretty in line. He's not stupid. If he was making a move or he had the jack of clubs, do you really think he's going to call a raise well, from you? I mean, especially think about who's raising. It's Jeff Blend. Well, here, here's another situation. We'll get to this. Uh, we got a raise here by seat two. He's got ace, queen of hearts, $50. And I was actually going to say $15. I, mean, I do think you call a $200 bet, but I don't think you open the betting up again by raising. Well, my question is, is if you're going to raise, I actually got into this argument with Shirley one time in a whale game yeah. when Tim Fan basically raised a hand. He didn't have the nuts. Um, actually, that, that situation doesn't apply because he had to call. But if you're going to raise there, say, you know, maybe make a value raise and hope that the guy's got the king of clubs, yeah. if you get re-raised, you actually have to fold. Yeah. Like, if he raised there for value, trying to get a call, you have to have it in your head. Well, if I get re-raised, I'm going to fold. Yeah, okay. You know? I mean, yeah. it's a hell of a lay down, but it's just... Yeah, if you and, and look at and we're teasing him by giving him the uh, oh no I thought actually because if you look at the situation Dave if a guy bets and you raise and you make a value raise I mean basically what can he what can he re raise well, what you can he re raise you but you're you're not winning or losing any more money with the intention of folding to a re raise right if you were willing you know to call up to that amount yeah I mean I, I suppose the raise is okay if you're going to fold into a re raise yeah um. But, you know, you don't have the nuts there. Right. And you got to be careful, especially when there's four. See, it's, it's one thing when, when the nuts is not an apparent hand out there. But only an idiot doesn't see the ace of clubs as the nuts. You know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things where if a guy has a queen of clubs, he knows it's not the absolute nuts. There's four clubs out there. Right. So we had a raise here to 20 bucks. I believe it was by Peter with Big Slick. And he's going to get called six ways here. King 3-6, so he's hit top pair here. Now, Jeff's yeah. open-ended there with 4-5. Yeah, and Sylvester's got a pair of fours. But Peter obviously well in command of this hand. Let's see how he plays it. Pot's 120 bucks. I believe it's gotten checked to him. Hammerman, there it is. Touchdown. No. Was There's a little bit of delay here. With people are watching the Back football down. game in the background, Dave. You're right on. Way to go. I, th I think that Sylvester has bet here. Dave. He has. He bet about forty dollars. Yeah. Kind of a little, uh, kind of a little name is price bet, I guess. He wants to see where he was at with fours. And uh, Ace King is going to raise it up to one sixty. So it's about wow. a fifty dollar bet to raise. Or yes. sixty dollar bet and a raise, a hundred bucks more. Yeah, and Jeff doesn't want to play here. He has four or five of spades, but he throws it away, and obviously Sylvester's going to be out of there too. And Peter takes it down, and Peter adds to his stack. Um, you know, there are times where you can value raise somebody if it's not apparent. Sometimes, like let's say it's a double paired, well, it's a paired board, right? And, the, and it's uh, you know, deuce, deuce, nine, right? And you've got pocket nines, and you're pretty sure the guy has a deuce, right? You can va you can really put a nice raise in there because the guy, especially if you think the guy's going to call you and pay you off with a deuce, right? Because nine's full is not an apparent hand, right? Right. But when there's a four flush on the board, 
it is very apparent. Yeah, four in line to a straight flush. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah but, but especially just four. When there's four clubs on the board, it's very apparent that the ace is the nuts, the king is the second nuts, and so forth. Right. Button's going to move over here to CD. Pocket jacks for Steven the Magician. See how Steven plays the jacks here? I thought he was going home, he said. Want to wish a happy new year to everybody listening here. Once again, we're live at the bike. David Tuckman with Bart Hansen. You can follow us on a live thread at 2 plus 2 or full contact poker. You can also email us any questions you might have at liveatthebike.com. Steven racer. takes it down here. Yeah, he's going to show the jacks. And Dave, you know what? USC is taking a lead here by one point. What a game. Wow. 17-16, huh? Yeah. Making me sweat it out. I really thought the game would be over by now. You know, it's just funny because, again, I, I kind of make fun of yeah, Southern California sports fans, Dave, because they don't really have the passion. Look at the difference between the passion of, say, a USC fan and a Texas fan. I mean, where do you think college football is better, you know, bigger, in Southern California or in Texas? Well, I mean, well, well clearly, but, <laughs> but actually I, I think college fans are pretty rabid. I mean, Laker fans here are pretty big fans. We just, I mean, think about it. Southern California, and I'm obviously a New Yorker, but Southern California, we don't have a football team, you know? No, it's just, you know, that laid back, laid back yeah. ass Pacific type sports fan, Pacific right. Coast. Like We've a, got a lot like more. Like a Chargers do. fan. Yeah. Boy, I'm a Chargers fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in Southern California, obviously, because the good weather and so forth, we've got a lot, a lot to do out do. here. You know, we don't have to sit inside and, and, and watch the, uh, you know, the Red Sox, the Patriots, or the Jets play. Pocket Kings here on the button here for Jeffrey. Can you imagine he's going to raise? Raise. It does. I think it makes it $40. $30, actually. Okay. Yeah. Now, Sylvester's got 3-4 off suit here in seat 5. He's going to make the call, but, boy, Dave, he only really has about 300 bucks. So mm -hmm. I don't, you know, again, I mean, if he knew that the guy had kings, he's really going to need a special flop here to bust him. And he's got one pair, jack 3-7. Once again, Sylvester just doesn't have enough money. Yeah, Sylvester's going to come out and bet here with bottom yeah, pair. He's just pure bluffing here. We've seen Sylvester well, go on tilt like this sometimes, well, too. Well, possibly, he, maybe he thinks he has the best hand. Maybe he puts the guy on some high cards. The issue now is if Jeffrey raises, and, and Jeffrey's going to raise. Yeah, and that, now is Sylvester, is he pot committed? Well, that's the problem. Now you gotta, now you got to add it up and go, well, the pot is now almost $300, well, it was and an i got 100 more to call. It was an $80 bet. $80 bet, and uh, Jeffrey has moved all in here. So on that street alone, boy, I want to say the pot's about five hundred dollars, and it's probably about two twenty for Sylvester to call. I don't necessarily Sylvester doesn't know. have that much. He has one sixty-five, and, and he calls. And he made the call. Yeah, he has to. I mean, he's almost pot committed already. Turn is an eight. Okay. And goes the broke. Reverse is six. Pot committed meaning if you put the guy in an over pair with two cards to come, can I hit two pair of trips? Yeah, I mean you go, okay, well I've got five. You figure, okay, if I hit two pair, I'm good. Mm -hmm. If I hit my three, I'm obviously good. So I've got five outs. Okay. Five outs with two cards to come, about a 20%, right. 20 Am I getting four to one? Right, that's no. a, it becomes a math problem. It's close, yeah. Right, it becomes a math problem now. I mean, I'm not sure if he was pot committed or not in that right. case. But we've seen Sylvester do this before. I mean, he's played on the show before where he'll play solid for like three or four hours. Yeah. And then he kind of like steams off $300. Um, it's real interesting there. I mean, I just don't know what exactly he was doing, especially if you look at a case there. I don't mind calling a big raise with 3-4 if I'm deep and if my opponent is deep. And then I'm looking to hit some sort of magical flop, obviously. But when you only have $300, the implied odds just aren't there. Button is in seat one, limping around here. And this is interesting here. Now, Steven in late position with king-queen off suit just limps in, and that's not a hand I like to limp in with. I don't really want to see a lot of opponents with that. If you don't, if you're not comfortable playing king queen, just get rid of it. I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather limit my field here. Now he's got five action, five way action. The pot is only twenty-five dollars, and the flop is ace ten nine two hearts, and uh, Victor's not the best hand here. He's got uh, ace three. A couple of players have nines. 
And uh, Victor's going to take this down, I'm pretty sure. Um, actually, I, I, you know, Stevens got king queen. He's got, well, he's going to lay it down. A flop of 10, 9, 3 actually is not that, I'm sorry, ace 10, 9 is not that bad flop for king queen. Um, take one off. Actually, what the hell am I talking about? I'm losing my mind here. For some reason, I saw the flop as 10, 9, 3. Obviously, there's an ace out there, which is obviously an awful flop for king queen. My whole point there was actually, actually going to say, if the flop is 10, 9, 3, king queen actually isn't bad because you figure any picture and you're a winner. You know, obviously, any paint that comes out, jack comes out, you have straight, a king or a queen, you have top pair. But anyway, I digress. Button is in seat three, and it's going to get chopped up here. Button moves over to seat four. That's Jeff Blend. And Jeff Blend's rebought. He's got about, I want to say, three or $400 in front of him now. So the button's going to move over here to seat four. It's been, been a pretty interesting game here tonight, Dave. I mean, sometimes I, I want to—I feel like I want to kill myself on Tuesday nights with that three-to-five game. Yeah, you, you know, know, sometimes <laughs> a two-hundred-dollar game is really interesting. Yeah. We were telling our viewers, you know, we really want to cater to all our all, all type of players. Right. And, and there aren't that many players that play fifty-one hundred blind, no limit hold'em. Right. There are more players that play this, and obviously you can learn a lot from watching this game. Seat five there, Sylvester made it twenty to go with Ace Rag and. C8 there's going to call with pocket fives. Yeah, so Victor's Sylvester cool. only bought 300, and it looks like he's betting blind here. Well, that's a good, good bet when you bl you're betting blind into a set. Set of fives. Now, this is a case where, you know what, I've got position on a guy who's tilting. I might just smooth call. Well, he's going to race. Okay, well, what do I know? 200. And, and it really does appear that Sylvester is tilting, isn't he? And, that, and that's the thing. I mean... Sometimes you want to play it fast. You and I always say we always we're advocates for playing something fast. But in a case where a guy is obviously okay, tilting, you. you know, and uh, like, has bet blind into your set, well, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna. I don't want to stop him from betting. I have position on him. Why not let him bet more? Let him commit himself again before I uh, move all in. Bud's gonna move over to seat five. Steven the Magician, who wanted to go home, but he's still in there, Dave. He was almost down and broke. Back up to about 400 bucks. Limp, limp. And here we go. I'm going to see five-way action. Our four-way action here. So it's $20 pot. Ace, 10, 4 with a couple of diamonds. Doesn't look like anyone really has that much. No, uh, Brentley Old. Steven's got a uh, flush draw. Brentley's got bottom pair. $20 bet here. And we are heads up. Sylvester's got absolutely nothing. Yeah, he's making a bluff at it. Turns a 4. Well, this is the whole case. Why why stop the guy from bluffing if he's going to bluff at you? Well, it goes check, check. Okay. Well, excu no, excuse me. Uh, S Steven checked, and Sylvester's going to bet again. He bets 40. Now, this obviously, this case is a different case because Sylvester has the button and has position. Well, if Sylvester gives up here at the end, the pot's going to be chopped. Yeah, we're obviously, both players right now have a pair of fours, yep. ace, jack, ten. Steven calls. Yeah, Sylvester can only win this pot if a eight pulls, falls off. The river's a six. Or obviously if Steven folds. This is one of the reasons why you want to raise and be aggressive with your draws rather than be passive. Sylvester just bets 35 and he's going to take it down and uses his position there. Steven played that hand a little bit weak tight. Yeah. And the button there is going to move over to Steven. You know, it's funny, I, I think that that was the first time, Thank you. as we look at another chip count, that we've ever had a uh, nut flush up against a straight flush, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, you know, we're talking about how to play it. Obviously, right. it is difficult to get away from ace of clubs there. So Jeffrey there in seat nine, boy, he, he just made a huge 
you know, upward swing there with that straight flush. He's up to 2,100 and almost up a thousand for the night. Victor's down. This a is a two hundred dollar game, folks. Yeah, it's a thousand bucks in what two hours in a two hundred dollar yeah. game. Now speaking of weak tight, I reviewed actually mastering no limit hold'em by Russ Fox. Um, <laughs> real interesting. Here it is. Weak tight. Oh, I'm sorry, not weak tight. Mastering no limit hold'em by Russ Fox. And I gotta be honest, actually, I personally don't agree with a lot of the stuff Russ Fox says. But in terms of a book for a beginner player to get into these restricted buying games, the $100 buy-in restricted game, and the $200 restricted game, I think it's a very valuable book. If you've never played in a brick-and-mortar casino, Russ Fox and Scott Harker here, they do a really good job of explaining to you what you're going to expect when you walk into a casino, how to play, uh, how to acclimate yourself to, you know, live poker. Um, so i got to say, if you're a beginner, you're just getting into No Limit Hold'em, you know, you watch it on TV, and you... Uh, you want to, you know, venture into a casino, pick up this book. It's a, actually a pretty good investment. Um, but as far as if, you, if you've got some experience and you're an advanced player, I don't think it's that valuable. we got pocket aces here on the button. He raised. Sylvester limped in with 10-6 off suit. See, Sylvester is obviously steam. We've seen him do this. He has a tendency to do this once in a while. Um... He's going to call. And, and you'll see this all night now from Sylvester until he either gets up or goes broke. Yeah. <coughs> Flop comes out 9-7-4. Again, we've got 10-6 against pocket aces. And this is one of those times where you, if you're focused at the table and you kind of recognize the fact that Sylvester is steaming, you can take advantage of it. And sure enough. And look at this. He's going to, and aces bet 65, and Sylvester's going to check raise to 165 with nothing. We apologize for having some trouble with the cards. And uh, the magician calls. Yeah, just so you know aces. what's going on here. The flop is 974. Yeah. Seat 7 has aces, and Sylvester has 10 6. And aces is going to take it down. Sylvester just kind of donked slash steamed off all his chips there, Dave. Well, and that, that, you just got to be perceptive and watch a player. There we you go. See it. There we go. You know, and, and, that, and we've seen Sylvester do this time and time again in this game. And there it is. He's out of there. And like Barry Greenstein says, Dave, most of the money won and lost in poker is through steaming. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and if you're a good poker player, one of the important things is to recognize when somebody is steaming. Right. And they're talking about it now. He was steaming. Right. And the magician just got a, about a, what, a $300 gift there, kind of wrapped in a little package with a bow on it. So once again, that's trying to go. Once again, this is Mastering No Limit Hold'em, a guide to cash games by Russell Fox and Scott Harker. Uh, a good book if you're a beginner and you really want to venture in. Um, but I thought it was a little bit, to me, his his recommendations were a little bit tight, a little bit passive, uh, for my taste. But hey, to each their own, right? No, Button's going to move over here to C8. Yeah, and we say goodbye to Sylvester. Got a few limpers here. And if you want to be a professional poker player, folks, you've got to get rid of that part of your game. If you're a steamer, if you have a tendency to get emotional in poker, you've got to get rid of that. Seven-way Seven action here. Five, four, five. Couple people have flush draws here. Yeah, I think I want to say that Jeffrey has the best hand here with a pair of fours, though, huh? And actually, it's Steven has the nut flush draw. Well, actually, we got pocket sevens. We have an over pair. Okay, there you go. And seat one is going to lead out here. Or seat nine, excuse me. Yeah, I got to tell you, fours. if you're Jeffrey here with a pair of fours, do you really even want to get involved with a flop like this? I mean, it's like so many draws out there, aren't there? Let's see what Jerry's going to do here in seat two with pocket sevens. He's next to act. He's just going to call. Smooth call, see where he's at, I guess. Steven's got the nut flush draw there behind him. And I imagine Steven's just going to smooth call as well. All right, three players. So we got three-way action here. Jerry has the best hand here with sevens. The turn's a queen. Well, it doesn't change anything. Once again, if Steven were to play his draw aggressive, he'd probably take it down, wouldn't he? Check, check, check. you got to think that Steven's probably going to check the turn, and he does, and the river's a four. Wow. And now Jeffrey fills up. And he checked right. it. He can't even bet it. He checked it on the river. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's going to take it down there with the four. And 
Four, Pocket yeah, Sevens played that a little bit passively as well, kind of sheepishly, Dave. Well, both players did. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, Jeffrey didn't do anything wrong. He threw a little bit to see where he was at. He got called in two spots, and then he shut down. Yeah. And then they let him get there. And uh, David is actually going to move over to seat five. And we're looking for a new player in seat one. We'll obviously get one there in a second. Button moves over to seat nine. We got king, queen, off suit there in seat seven. The magician. He's going to limp. A7 of spades here is going to limp. Button's going to limp here with king, deuce of clubs. Okay. And we got six-way action Six here. Players. Limped around. Jack, nine, queen with all diamonds. Jerry's got an open-ended straight flush draw there in seat two. That's it? <laughs> he also has a gut shot to the 35. king for a straight. He's going to bet 35 here. Actually, excuse me, he's got an open-ended straight draw. Right, but if the king comes, he has the absolute nuts. That's right. Right. And that's what you got to do. When you have big draws, you got to bet them, folks. You can raise them also. Obviously, if you raise them, you got to be careful. If somebody re-raises you, you can, uh, you can price yourself out sometimes. Button's going to move over there to seat Order. number two. There we go. Oh. Sounds like some cheering in the background, Dave. Touchdown. Yeah, the problem is, is this, this team is behind the rest of them. Really? Yeah. yeah. About two seconds. I swear to God, the agita that I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> Reminds me of like those uh, days of White Castle. Those, are, those TVs are ahead. $30 raise here by seat nine. This time he's going to do it in position. Jack seven off suit. And C3 is going to move all in for the rest you know of his trips. Brantley is, Brantley is up to Jeffrey's tri tricks here. And he's on to him. Yeah. But Jeffrey's going to call anyway. I think well, he's only 55 more. He's getting or 3 to 1. one total, yeah. And he's hoping he has live cards, but he doesn't. Oh, oh look at this, though. He outflops him. Yeah, oh, that's just brutal. Yeah, terrible. Brantley Jeffrey needs a queen here. Does not come. Yeah, Jeffrey is just, uh, you know, he has been beating Brantley. And he even says, I guess, I had you dominated. Well, dominated, dominated there. <laughs> Two pair takes it down. Aces and sevens with a jack kicker. Yeah, looks like Brantley's out of there, dude. Yeah, Brantley's gone. Say goodbye to Brantley. You know, Brantley's going to watch the show tonight, obviously, and he's going to look at it. And, you know, obviously, we try not to get these personal. We're obviously, when we criticize somebody, we're criticizing their poker and not them. Um, but he'll watch and he'll say, wow, I did play those jacks really right. passive. You know, I did play this. I could have played this way. And obviously, that's one of the great things about playing on Live the Bike. You can watch yourself play. Really be criticized. Really, really be critical of your own play. Pocket aces here over in seat seven. Well, let's see what the magician does with him. He's going to raise it up to 30. And he's not going to get any play here. Probably no. Let's see what Steven does, though. Peter, I'm sorry. Peter Grosdeck. Mr. Greystock. No, nah, he's, he's not going to play. I tell you, the magician's gotten, like, no action. He raises with jacks. Nobody calls. He raises with aces. Nobody calls. We've got a real pretty tight passive table here, except for maybe uh, Jeffrey in seat nine, huh? Button's got to move over here to seat five. Two small blinds and a big blind here, please. I did want you to call. We're gonna have two small blinds here and a big blind. Small on the button. It's just because he left on his button, so I had to push it forward. And. Under the gun here is in seat eight. Pocket nines over here for seat six. So, Ronnie, there's just one seat open here. That one's locked. Limp, limp. Well, I guess Brantley's locked it up in seat three. He's going to uh, probably make that dreaded trip to the ATM machine. Wow. Extremely tight passive here. Peter did not raise the pocket nines. 
Six-way action, and Peters hit a full house, and David, welcome to the table, has got trip fours. Oh, boy, this might be big here, folks. It's going to get checked around the turns and ace. Gives Steven an ace. 15. And we got a $15 bet here out of Steven. Let's see how David is going to play it. Peter checked the full house again from up front in seat six. And David just called. Now, Steven's out of position here. Or excuse me, um, Peter is out of position. How's he going to extract the most amount of money here with this hand? Checked around on the flop. A bet out here by a weak ace and a call by the trip force. And he's going to mini raise it here. Is that, is that totally stable? Maybe this is going to be like throwing the bait out here. He mini raises it. Fifteen more. And I think that Steven probably should head out of this hand. And you wonder if David's just going to move all in here. I mean, this guy has mini raised from up front against two people. Wow, and Steven's going to call. And what's David going to do? He's going to call. Here we go to the river. The river is a six. And let's see what Peter does here. The pot is about 120 bucks. How much is he going to bet? Boy, he's just betting so small here. He bets 30. Are you kidding me? Could have had all of David's. Well, David's just going to move all in now. With trip fours, and oh. Peter's going to call. I mean, Peter just sometimes you just get involved and you just want to slow play everything. Um, I, I think with seven four there, I, I might have just called on the river. I mean, that guy played that hand so sheepishly that I mean, a mini raise into two players there on the turn. He's obviously not trying to drive anybody out. I mean, he just played the hand like it was a monster the whole time. Obviously, we're privy to seeing the cards, but, I mean, has anybody made that type of move here on this table, a mini raise bluff? I just don't buy it. I guess that's another one of those, you know, times where if I'm going to involve myself on the turn with 7-4, probably just going to call the river. I mean, and Peter let the guy off the hook by betting $30 on the river. The guy just called Peter, you know, would have won close to the minimum there on that hand. But he moved all in, and there's obviously he was done, and he goes broke. Yes. Yet another person that goes broke here tonight. All that running bad, finally paying me back. Limped around here. Three ways. Man, this game is turning into like a graveyard. I was gonna here. say this is like. Uh, no, we're getting like you know people getting killed at every little level here. Seven, six, five. Twenty. Oh, got Steven's a, got a piece of it. Got a bet here by Steven. Pairing on open-ended straight draws. He's gonna bet twenty. And look at this, Jerry's going to raise here with an open end straight try. And actually, that bet was by Victor. Victor bet with the open end. And uh, now Jerry's getting aggressive with his draws now, Dave, so he's changed up his game a yeah. little bit. Well, it's short-handed here. I think you got to make this move here. And, you know, he's got, he's got, uh, he's got Victor right where he wants him here. I mean, his king high is good already. And, and this is the type of thing, you know, if I make a little semi-bluff out there with Jack 8 and I get raised, do I want to continue with the hand here? I mean, what am I trying to look for? Well, now both players have a straight. He doesn't. Yeah, Jerry's, okay, now this is the perfect, we always talk about this. Yeah. They both have the same exact straight, but Jerry is on a complete free roll. Right. And this is the time where you really want to push it. And Victor's going to bet. He's going to bet 100. Yeah, get all your money. Oh, well, he doesn't have Well, he doesn't money. have that much money left yeah. anyways. Yeah. And he's going to call. He's going to put the rest of the money in. Yeah. So he's on a free roll here. He needs a spade. Well, he's not going to get it. They're going to chop this one up. The only the only thing here, Dave, yeah. is if you're if you are deep in this situation, it's not the perfect free roll because there is one hand that you're also worried about that the guy might have. Obviously, have. Well, and obviously, I was gonna say, you know, Victor, if Victor had made a bet out there with 10-8 and got raised, you could call because again, you know, if the guy is raising with an open-ended straight draw, you've got the good straight. Right. But I don't know if he should have continued with that hand with Jack Gay, but you're just not gonna make much money off it. I mean if you hit Plus it. the guy didn't have any more money left yeah. either, right? Exactly. I mean it's just no, you're you're hundred percent right there. Now obviously in that case it's not a hundred percent free roll. We know it's a free roll, they don't know it. Right. Somebody else could have had diamonds. Look at that. Wow. Uh somebody could have a diamond draw and somebody could have a ten eight up. Is that the magician there? Uh no, no. that's Peter. Oh, cool hat. 
Check it out. 1995 NCAA BU. BU. BU Hockey Champions. A lot of people that don't know about college hockey, they actually do a tournament just like basketball does at the end of the... Uh, yeah, the Frozen Four, it's called. Yeah. It's going to get chopped up. I actually had some buddies that played for BU. I'm trying to think of if they were on that team or not. 95. I know Chris Drury played for the team then, 95. That was a good team. Button is in seat eight here. He's queen off suit for the big blind. 25. And we got a $25 raise. And we got ace king in seat four, and he opened it for a raise. Seat nine called, and seat one called. $75 pot here. Three-way action. Wow, king, queen, three. Jeffrey checks. Brantley's going to check. He moved over to seat one. And Jeff is going to lead here with the ace king. 75. You bet 75. Do you want to get involved here against a no, guy like not, Jeff? Yeah, exactly. you got to play the player here. I mean, Jeff has pretty much and won he, every he, hand he's played except the one hand where he had the second nut flush. Right, he turns the ace queen out. Um, now, I get an interesting thing here. Obviously, we're an interactive show, so I'm responding to a, a post from 2 plus 2 here, Baron Vanger Toth, a um, guy who posts all the time here. And he's talking about, he's saying, uh, in, in the long run, teaching weak, tight, weak, tight passive play will create bad, ha bad habits hard to break. Obviously, yes, I agree with that. And like I said, I don't wholeheartedly recommend the book. But Negrano actually used to say that if a book even gives you one or two pages of useful information, it's usually worth the investment. And in this case, there are a couple of pages of valuable information, especially if you've never been to a casino before. Um, also, it might also be interesting to see what other people are reading. And he's going to take it down. Jerry takes it down here. With uh, flush draw. He bets his flush draw and takes it down. Button's going to move over to seat nine. Um, oftentimes, I'll read a book and not like it necessarily or not even think it's that good. But if I know my opponents are reading it, well, then maybe it gives me a little insight in what they're thinking. Right. Um, and I'll get to I have one more book to actually review here. There's a book by Jonathan Maxwell called Cards. And it's actually not a how-to poker book as well. It's a... Kind of a storybook, and I got to be honest with you, I can't recommend this one at all. It was uh, <laughs> it was written completely in first person, like I did this, I did that, I did this. It's not well written, and it's it's like the smallest print in the world. Um, I got to be honest, I, I cannot recommend this, but it's, it's book is called Cards by Jonathan Maxwell. So if people are gonna give us books to review, we'll yeah. be more than happy to read them, but we're gonna give an honest review about it. Uh, obviously, obviously, yeah. and I and I told the guy who gave it to me. Um, now we got pocket nines and queen jack yeah. here, and uh, we had a raise by Brantley on the button, and we got three-way action. Ace Ooh. five nine. Peter's got another set. I got to tell you, that is a beautiful set, a beautiful uh, flop for nines. And this is you're almost hoping the guy has an ace. He flopped nines full a few hands ago, Dave, and this is the second time that he's he's got a set of nines, and he's gonna bet now. Well, this is a good bet there. I like the bet. You're kind of hoping somebody called me with an ace. You know, you're hoping somebody called with ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Obviously, in this case, nobody has anything. Uh, Jeffrey's got a gut shot straight draw here, and he's thinking of making a move, I think. And this should be the wrong time to make a move, buddy. No, nah, he's going to let it go. Queen Jack is out of there. Look at that, Russ Fox on the 2 plus 2 thread, Dave. Uh, kind of saying that, uh, for the most part, he thinks that in the 100 and the 200 games, you know, you can just sit back and wait for your for your good hands. And he acknowledges the fact that that's not the strategy that you're looking for in an unrestricted buy-in game. Right, right. And like I, was, like I was saying, I mean, I think it's a good book for beginners, but at the same time, you know, I think it does teach bad habits, and bad habits are hard to break. Um, so that's just my two cents. Yeah. So once again, in review here, I got three books here. How to Cheat Your Poker, Your Friends at Poker by, uh, you know, Penn, Penn and Teller. Excellent book, really funny, well-written. Mastering No Limit Hold'em by Russ Fox and Scott Harker. Uh, kind of if I had to rate it 1 to 10, I'd give it a 5. 
you know. That bad? Yeah, it's good for beginners, you know. Okay. Yeah, if you've never been to a casino, it's great. Yeah. And then Jonathan Maxwell here by cards, I I'd give it like maybe a two. Raise here. Seat one's got ace king. I like playing bad hands. And it was a forty-five dollar raise. And he's gonna take it down here. This game is kind of turned ridiculously tight passive, and it's actually slowed down. Yeah, and this to is the kind, last. Of, <laughs> kind of a lesson of, of, of also a lesson of shorthanded play. At a table like this, shorthanded, couldn't you just run over it? I mean, yeah. raising almost every third hand you could. Um, once again, though, with these books, obviously this is just my two cents. Um, feel free to go buy the books, read them. Well, who in their right mind would care what you think? Um, I know nobody does. But hey. Button's going to move over here to seat four. I try to tell people that in poker as well. Sometimes I, we walk out there and somebody goes, well, David, how the heck did you make that, compl how did you say that about my, my hand, the way I played it? I go, hey, it's just my two cents. You know, it's just my opinion. So. $20 raise here by uh, Jeffrey. Seven, three of diamonds. And he's going to get involved here with the stack, the big stack. And the big stack's got king, six of clubs, or I guess the second biggest stack. King, three, queen here. And Victor's going to check top pair. So here we go, Dave. Confrontation. Jeffrey's going to bet. He's got bottom pair. Let's see how Victor plays it. He bets 30. And just a call. Pot's now about $110. Turn is a five. And now Jeffrey's got a pair and a flush draw. And look at this. Victor's going to come out and bet here. He's going to come out and bet, Dave. He bets 50 into about a $120 pot. And Jeffrey's going to raise. He's going to raise here. And how much is he going to raise? That's the issue. Wow, I guess he just raised 100, and look how quickly Victor has called. Well, Victor's been calling Jeffrey all day, and yeah. he, I think, you know, Jeffrey's yeah. on to the fact that Victor, I mean, I'm sorry, Victor's on to the fact that Jeffrey's been bluffing. Got about a $450 pot, the rivers of four, and Victor escapes, and he's going to put a little blocker bet in here, Dave, on the river. Yeah. He bets 100 into about a $450 pot. And that's clearly a blocker bet. And just for our viewers who don't know, what do you think a blocker bet is? Well, you know, the other thing, too, is, I mean, even though this is a, a three to five game, these guys are really deep stacked. So it almost when you play the guy heads up, it almost plays more like an unrestricted game. Can you sniff out a blocker bet and just make a raise and get a guy off of a weak king? Uh, I right. guess 3-7 just didn't want to get involved. But what do you, when, you, when, you, when you say he made a blocker bet, what exactly, just for our viewers at home who don't know exactly what a blocker bet is, well, what are you saying of, It's is? kind of like a defensive bet. We use it in the terms of you're kind of naming your price. You don't want to check and maybe face a big bet, possibly by a bluffer um, that has missed. So you yeah. actually want to throw in like a defensive bet, kind of name your price. But again, you know, the problem with doing that is so, you know, quickly pointed out by some of our uh, viewers um, is that, you know, an advanced player will kind of snuff that out. Right. And, and obviously, you know, some people can also make the argument, go, wait a second, if the guy's bluffing, why well, don't you want him to bluff all his money away? Well, sometimes it's really hard to call, say, a four or five hundred dollar right. bet with a pair of kings and a six right. kicker. Right. I gotta say, I like the play by by Jeffrey. I didn't realize he was just on a bluff there. I mean, he had a pair of threes with the flush draw. And a pair of threes. With I mean, the he had draw. a lot of outs there. Right. Three, a seven, or a diamond would have given the win there. Twenty-five dollar raise here. Three players. And I think it was by Steven in seat seven with deuce three. Actually, it was seat nine. Jeffrey with ace eight off suit. King 5-3. Steven's going to check. Brantley has got a gut shot to the four, and Jeffrey checks, and Brantley takes the card. Turn is a three, and look at his Steven's made trip threes. And he's going to come out and fire here, it looks like. Now, Jeffrey's got the eight of spades in his hand. 30. And in this case, nobody has. And this is one of those times also where you go, well, if I hit my three, maybe I'll make a big pot. I'll win a big pot. But the problem is you're counting on the fact that your opponent has something. Right. And once again, your opponent has nothing. <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, great, you know, you got there, but you're not going to get paid off anyway. There are no apply downs. And he's going to take it down there. We do appreciate all your emails and all the posts we get from uh, on, on 2 Plus 2 and Full Contact Poker. You can catch us every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. You can actually see every show we've ever done if you've subscribed to the archives. All you got to do is go to liveatthepike.com. Top left corner, you can go to the archives, click on it, 
and you get just for fourteen ninety five a month, you get every single show we've ever done. I mean, we're talking shows. If you're new to it and you don't know, we have shows at Doyle Brunson, Greg Raymer, Kathy Liebert, Men the Master, uh, Phil Locke. I mean, you name it, we've had him on the show. Oh, Tim you. Fan. Jerry Buss. I mean, the list goes on and on. Ted Forrest. Uh, we actually had Barry Greenstein in the booth That's right. for four hours of commentary. I mean, how much is that? Couple like shows. Itself? Yeah, I mean, different shows. Pick Jerry. You can pick Barry Greenstein's head for four hours there. I mean, unbelievable value. Three-way action here. Looks like Jeff's got the best hand with an ace deuce. But Jeffrey's going to come out and bet. He's got a gut shot to the ten. He bets 15. Let's see how, and look, look how passive Jeff is. I mean, a shorthanded. Not necessarily the flop you're looking for with Ace Deuce, but he just gets rid of it immediately. He doesn't even think about it. Yeah. And if you're Jeffrey, why not just bet every single time? Yeah. That's fine. Victor's got pocket sevens here. Not a great flop for sevens, but. Let's see if he's going to go for it here. Well, he's going to make the call. Now, Jeffrey's got a lot of outs, though. Any 10. Turns any three. king, any jack, and that's a good card if you think your if you think your opponent's bluffing. Yeah, and I think that he's just he's just check calling here, and he thinks he has the best hand here. Well, he's right. Here we go to the river. Rivers of four. Well, that, unfortunately, if you guys want a spade draw, and he's going to bet forty bucks here, and he's going to make the call. And, and you know, it's funny. You can kind of see the way he bet there. I mean, obviously, these are tells of in 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 real live poker. Right. He threw the bet at his opponent, kind of aggressively. And oftentimes, if you act strong, you are weak. Right. And throwing the bet at your opponent is obviously acting strong. And sure enough, he was bluffing there. Now, Dave, even if he had a good piece of that board, say he had two pair or something like that, he's only betting $15. I mean, it, it seemed the way that Victor played it that he thought he had the best hand. He did have the best hand. He was just checking to induce a bluff or yeah. just check calling. But in certain situations, you can, you know, you can actually call it to even hit your even hit your set there if you think the implied odds are deep enough. If you really think 25. your opponent has a big hand, but again, you you have to know that you're going to get paid off by. Well, some sort if of you monster. think your opponent is ace queen there, yeah, of course you can. Right, right. You know, you hit your seven, you're going to make a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> but a twenty-five dollar raise here by seat four. I show you respect, my friend. Jeff's got pocket tens. He's going to take it down over there. Don't mess with the law. Thank you. <laughs> I bought the law and the law one. And, uh, boy, how many hands has Jeff played all night, dude? Pretty tight. Pretty tight player. Button's going to move over there to seat nine. Each row is 60 bucks, right? Are there four to a row or three? Forty-five. Forty-five each time. And so we're playing. Uh, we only get what one seat open there. Mm -hmm. That's so. interesting. The way to play sevens there. Obviously, you can check to induce a bluff and keep doing that. Right. But obviously, you've got to be aware of the fact that your opponent might get there too. Right. And in that case, you know, your opponent actually had, you know, three kings, three jacks, and four tens. And it was a third spade on the river. Right. I had ten outs to get there. Stephen limps, and uh, Jeffrey's going to raise here on the button with king jack. Off suit. He's going to make it twenty-five. You know, if Jeffrey had, you know, you know, I don't mind the way that Jeffrey plays here, but he's just got to stop raising with inferior hands from up front. That's that's part of the problem. That's the only thing, yeah. Yeah, queen, four, eight here, rainbow. I mean, he's been able to get away from hands. He's made some nice moves here and there. And he's getting paid off on his big hands. You know, sometimes by creating an image like this, you do get paid off. He's going to bet 30 here. You know, if you have an image like Jeff Blend. Well, look at this, Victor. Uh, well, he's not going to make a move at it. If you have an image like Jeff Blend has, it's really like a guy in seat four. It's really tough to get paid off on your big hands. Yep. Um, but Jeffrey obviously has been getting paid off. Now I haven't read the uh, I haven't read the uh, Master No Limit Hold'em book. No, you haven't. You should. But from what you told me about it and some of the passages that you, you know, kind of showed me and were like, "Wow, look at this." It, it almost seems like if if Ross Fox is say you know trying to teach in that book players how to play like him similar to him is that how, is that what he's doing there in that book I mean I, I can only assume so to be honest with you I haven't played with Russ I mean I've watched Russ a little bit right, on the right. show but I haven't played him that much I'm not that familiar with this game um, 
But it just seems that Russ is, I, I've never really seen him mix it up. And I think maybe he comes from the theory that you just never need to mix it up in well, a 100 or 200 game. You know what, game. in the 100 or 200 game, yeah, exactly. Some people are saying you don't have to mix it up. But I just don't think it teaches you good habits for, you know, moving right. up and playing bigger games. Well, so we're going to take a look at another chip count here. Well, Jeffrey's gone down a bit since the last chip count. And Victor is, uh, he's gone, he's pretty much stayed the same. Well, Jeffrey's playing style is going to, you know, his, his, his chip stack is going to be a little volatile. Yeah, it's going to be like a little, little bit of a roller coaster. And the Magician, who's almost broke, is up to 600 bucks. Yeah. Peter's actually doing pretty well. He's at $1,200 there at 6 He's taking up two seats right now. The old, uh, you know, foot. And I don't even know if there's a chair over there in seat five. You ruined it. 45. Pot looks like it gets limped around to the button. And C2 is going to raise it up here. Jerry at 45. He's got ace king off suit. So it's $40 more here for these limpers. Now, Victor, obviously, he is deep stacked here. He's got 6 4 spades. I don't think Jerry has that many chips, though, in front of him over there. And Victor wisely folds here. Same, you know, same issue here for Brantley, possibly, with pocket fours. And he's going to fold. I mean, okay, I'm gonna, I want to read one passage. Obviously, we're having a little bit of a lull on the show, and we like to take liberty here once in a while. I'm going to read one passage. It's a quiz question from Russ Fox's book. And I just want to throw this out, because this is one of the questions where I really had a problem with it. And this is the question. You hold pocket queens in a cutoff seat. There are two limpers to you, and you raise to $20. Only one of the limpers calls you, so it's heads up. The flop doesn't appear threatening. It comes out 773 rainbow. However, to your surprise, the pre-flop limper bets $30. Yeah. It's your turn to act. What is your action? And I want to leave people at home on the 2 plus 2 side and email us. Think about this and let me know what your action is. Because uh, his, his answer is obviously is a, is a little strange to me. Remember, you have pocket queens in position. The flop is 773. And your opponent has bet into you. We got a raise here by Jeffrey. Ace, 10 of clubs, and Brantley called him with pocket eights. Heads up, $60 pot. Well, here's one of these situations, Dave, with pocket eights. How do you know if you're good? Jeffrey's going to bet here. He's got the best hand. Yeah, it's a tough one. Jack 10 are those two of those play. They're kind of in the in Yeah. No, absolutely. People do play jacks, people play 10, so. And Jeffrey is ahead now. But once again, Brantley is. Uh, well, and here's the situation, too. I was going to say, the problem also with Jack 10 now, if you've got pocket eights, is he's going to bet 55 here. Wow, eights is going to call. It's going to say, if another Broadway card comes, you're almost sure to be beat by something, a straight or some pair, yeah. right? And there it is. And look at this. The river is a king, but it's a third heart. Could could Brantley possibly represent a hand here? Check. I don't it's just going to get money. checked down. Yeah. That's good. Now, the interesting thing is that Brantley is kind of, he, I think he's kind of pissed off at Jeffrey. Jeffrey's had the best of him all right, day. Right, right. So that's one of the reasons. Okay, now I hope everybody's thought about this, written in your posts and so forth. Remember, you have pocket queens in position. Right. The flop is seven seven three, and the better is bet thirty dollars about half the pot into you. Now this is his answer. Oh, don't give it yet. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought that gave enough time for everybody to. No, remember we're in a five minute delay. Right, but they still heard me. I thought it's, we were gonna, it's in real time for them. I thought we were going to read it off like as we were going Okay, along. okay, okay. I'll give him five more minutes then. We'll, we'll go to the answer in a second. <laughs> what I mean is we need to wait five minutes for, for us to get the right. responses. And, and obviously a lot of it depends on who you're playing against. Am I playing against Jeffrey in seat nine or am I playing against, uh, you know, Jeff in seat four? Right. But having the little information that I gave you, what do you do? Four players. Limped around here. Four-way actions. A $20 pot. Jack, 9-5, so Brantley's got top pair here. And Jeffrey's got a flush or he actually checked it from up front. He's been betting pretty much on every flop, Dave. Brantley's going to bet here. No way. And risk them tying it up. Yeah. And let's see what Jeffrey's going to do. Make him score, right? You're going to make him score. I really think that a check raise against this particular guy is a mistake in, th in this situation, Dave. Because Brantley has not really bet out on anything it's all a, night. We just pointed out also that Brantley. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, Jeffrey's drawing dead. Yeah. Well, actually, no, he's got club draw. I'm sorry. Oh, um, Brantley is. And look uh, at this! Brantley gives him a free card, Dave. And the river is a three. Well, that's not going to change anything. I don't think. I don't think Jeffrey's going to get silly here, is he? Well. 
The only thing that might save him here is that he made a pair and he might check it now because his hand might win, right? And he's going to bet 35 here. And there it is. Brantley's going to move all in. Jeff and quickly folds, obviously. Folds. Yeah. Yeah, Brantley's one of those guys that, like I said, I mean, he's not going to fold to Jeffrey. Right. There's no way. We have an email here by Toshi. Again, you can email us at livethebike.com. He says, quick question at you guys. What's the blue flashing light on the ceiling behind the table? Is it the on-air streaming live indicator? Well, no, it's not. It actually helped, and I've had this question asked me before. It actually is the time collection, say timer. It tells, when it goes off, it tells the floor man that it is, you know, the next half hour, and they need to go get right. money from the uh, collection pocket. Right, and the majority of the games at the Bicycle Casino were actually uh, hand collection, every hand they right. get rate, a collection. Right, rate, yeah. rate can, but um, some of the bigger games right. are collection cuts. I think they have a 60 mix game going on over there that's a collection game tonight. Yeah, Men the Master was in the house yeah. last night. I congratulated him for winning card player of the night. Card player, I think he won, right? Card player, mag uh, player of the year? I'm not sure. He had a he phenomenal did. November yeah. and December, and I think he won. Ace, 10, 7 here with a couple of diamonds. Jeffrey raised and Fahim called, and Fahim's going to move here. Yeah, Fahim doesn't have much money, and obviously Jeffrey gets rid of it. Yeah. Thank you. i got to tell you, I mean, obviously there are a couple of things in Jeff's game that I would, I would change, seat 9, Jeffrey, you know, in terms of raising out of position and so forth. But really, really interesting uh, the way he's mixed it up at a table like this. Waitress, make sure you know that David Premises all the funny thing is we're getting a couple of emails. I guess some big-time BU hockey players in 95. Um, I, mean, they're, 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 I mean, they're quoting some of the players that were on that team, Dave. I actually had a, a guy that was from my hometown that played on BU in the late 90s. His name was Ryan Diamond, and I think he's in the Avalanche system right now. Okay. You come and get a drink. Limped around here. I gave him a shot of scotch every day. I gave him a card trick. Limp. Ooh, you busted oh. me. Busted on Bourbon Street. Well, Glenn Levin Street. And SC is taking an eight point lead. Wow. Oh, am I sweating this one? Seven players. Seven way action here. Limped around. $35 pot. Queen, queen, five, and Steven's got king, queen, but uh -oh. Jerry also has a queen. Oh, and this could be trouble here. Let's see what Steven's going to do. Is he going to bet out on the queen here? There's a couple diamonds. He checks, and uh, Victor's actually going to bet on the five. Now, this is one of those times where you can overbet it a little bit, knowing that if somebody has a queen, I'm going to get paid off. And obviously, a really good no-limit player should be able to get away from queen bad kicker. Well, especially Jerry, when you, especially when you're real deep. Jerry mini check raises here, and now it's back to the person with the best hand, Stephen, who checked the flop with King Queen. Yeah, and he's in really good shape here, huh? Come on, Jeff, fold the King Nine. Let's get it going, buddy. There it is. So let's see what the magician's gonna do here. So a bet and a mini raise by Queen mm. Three. Let's see if the magician can make uh, Jerry's chips disappear. <laughs> Poof. Yeah, I don't know if, you, if Jerry's really deep enough just to be able to get away from this hand. He just calls, Dave. And Victor's got to know that his hand is no good now, right? I mean, you've got, you've bet, check, oh, any raise, yeah. and a call on the call. Victor, it's an easy fold, obviously. But I like the bet by him. He wants to see where he's at, and he finds out real quick. Well, Jerry's going to need to hit a three here. The turn's a nine, and it's a diamond. Well, Jerry's got a diamond draw now. Yeah. As long as it's not the king of diamonds, he's okay. I, I just don't think Jerry has enough money to get away from it, though. Jerry's going to bet. Now, what is, is Jerry oblivious to the fact that Steven might have a queen? I mean, come on. He bets 75. And Steven's going to lay it down, Dave. Steven laid it down. He bet on the turn, and Steven laid it down. Now, you know, it's funny. i got to be honest with you. Hey, look at the river. The river's a diamond. <laughs> yeah, i got to be honest with you. Normally, wow. normally, that's actually not that bad a lay down if you're really deep. Right. You know what I mean? Because you've got to be aware that when there's trips out there, and I want to give Steven credit for that, the problem is, though, in that case, Jerry just didn't have any money, though. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. And it turns out that the river would have been a diamond, and Jerry would have won anyway. Right. But, man, I mean, that's just, that's real tight. Right. Lord.
unbelievable. So it looks like a, a few people here, David, will give a couple more minutes about that hand that you asked. Again, if you want to repeat repeat the uh, question again. We've got a raise here. $30. By uh, seat nine, he's got ace jack. And we got called here in a couple spots. Look at Victor play against Jeffrey with 8-3 of hearts. Brantley's in there with 9-10, and Brantley has bottom two pair. Victor has a flush draw, and Jeffrey's got a gut shot. And it's probably going to get checked to Jeffrey, the story of the night. And he's going to bet. Let's see what Brantley's going to do here. Brantley is going to move on. You know, I like to play the with two hearts and 9-10 queen and king out there. Yeah. Let's not get fancy. Just take the pot down now. Well, he doesn't have any, to call me, doesn't go have ahead. any money either. I mean, what, is he going to raise to 80? Or not raise to 120. Some people don't raise at all, but uh, we know bottom yeah. two pair is really vulnerable. Well, the, the action's back over to Victor. It's actually about 103 more, so it's... Or 100 more, so... I think it's about 100... 100... 153 total here, Well, Dave. the thing is, you kind of dismiss Jeffrey because you go, well, this guy bets everything anyway. Yeah. Okay, Brantley's probably got, obviously, obviously an 8 or a 3 aren't good. I probably have 9 outs to my flush. Right. Okay. And that's what you got to look at. Well, the pot is about, I want to say, 290. It's 150 to call. He's okay, getting, so getting about, about 2 to 1. About 2 to 1. You want to gamble? That's a, you have to, basically. I mean, you got to also think, I mean, is there also a chance that Brantley has something like a set or two pair where it's not necessarily going to be 35% to hit your flush because he's got redraws. Without a doubt. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. You also have to worry about Jeffrey. I mean, I know Jeffrey's been playing every hand, but Jeffrey could get a real hand here. I wonder if Jeffrey's got ace-jack of hearts. Well, what happens if you call and now Jeffrey calls as well? You're not necessarily going to get a free card on the side the next card. I think there's just too much stuff working against you in this hand. I mean, actually, you could call and Jeffrey could move all in. <laughs> right. I mean, right, right. A lot of reasons to lay that down, especially when you're only getting two to one in a flush draw. So it's only 113 more here for Jeffrey. He's got a gut shot. That's it. I mean, he needs a queen that's not yeah. how he's going to get rid of it. And that's the part of Jeffrey's game I like. I mean, he's taking shots at almost every single pot, but he's getting away from it. Right. Taking a shot and then getting away. And look at that. The turn card was a king. So it would have, uh, can I say, counterfeited Brandley's hand? Well, not technically. <laughs> would have been three pair he would have had. Once again, I'm going to ask the question really quick. Once again, you have queens, you've raised, you get one caller in the big blinds. So you have queens in position. The flop is 773, and the guy bets into you about half the pot. What do you do with your queens? Right. And once again, it's 773 rainbow. Yeah. I think it's a pretty, pretty, pretty much a cons pretty much a consensus, Dave, that it's at least a call or a raise. Um, I, I think... 20? Yeah. <laughs> Baron Van Gortos is fooled. He clearly has pocket sevens and wants to avoid running queens. <laughs> I love the sarcasm. I, 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 I eat it up. <laughs> we got a raise here to tw $20. All right, four players. Four-way action. Well, after this hand, I will reveal what Russ Fox says to do. Now, did Jeffrey bring this one in here again? So well, Jeffrey raised again pre-flop, 7-10 this time. Victor's got top pair this time with but Queen Jack. And Jerry has the nut flush draw, and he's been raising with his with his draws all day long. Let's see if he does it again here. We got a bet here, 60 by Victor with Queen Jack. Well, he had been the last few hands, Dave. Let's see him. I'd love to see a raise here again. you got to think, maybe my ace is good if I hit my ace. Well, and obviously my spade raise. is good if I hit a spade. Well, he's going to raise. But the other thing that might be going through your head, though, Dave, is that Victor bet right into the razor, so you got to give him credit for something, right? Oh, without a doubt. But you know what? Even if there's a jack, though, he might not call. If he only has one pair. If he only has jack king or jack queen, he might not call. I think he made it, what, 75 more? 100 more. He made it 100 more, and Victor quickly called. Uh, yeah, okay. And here we go to the turn. The turn's a three. Well, does Jerry take a card now? Yeah, to be honest with you, if you're Jerry, I think you got to move all in. <laughs> I don't think he... Well, Victor's not even going to give him a card. He's going to... Well, I don't know actually who bet there. It was an all-in and a call. And I think Victor actually moved Jerry all-in there, Dave, on the turn. Yeah. Jerry put him in a spot where he, he had to call the turn. He only had one card to come. If Jerry's going to raise the flop there, yeah. move all-in. You know what I mean? He only got $120 more well, after had, that. Well, he had 12 outs there, too, because the ace was good as well. Exactly. We're all right. Put so, the pressure on Victor. So, so here it is. Hear the drum roll. Okay, what is your opponent... Russ Fox and Scott Harker want to go, well, what does your opponent hold? Is he bluffing? 
Hands like this one are, the, are why some of us get gray hair. If our opponent has pocket aces, pocket kings, seven anything, or pocket threes, you're way behind and in serious trouble. Well, if he holds anything else, except the other two queens, you're ahead and in great shape. So he says here, if your opponent is tight and solid, you, you should probably fold. He likely has one of the hands that beats you. But if you are up against anyone else, you should raise. And you should probably raise to $80. There you go. That's what Russ Fox and Scott so Harker you should probably that. fold? Well, he said fold to a solid, tight player. Right. Against anybody else, you should probably raise it up to $80, which is raising pretty much the pot. So, and you thought about that opinion what? I thought a lot of different things, depending, obviously a lot depends on the player you're playing against. Yeah. But my thought process was, well, how many players do you know that bet right into the razor with like, you know, a big, big hand, like pocket sevens there, four, right, you know, right, pocket right. threes there, or seven. You know, most of them will check raise. Right, right. I go, okay. And I'll get to this in a second after this hand. Jerry is going to, Jerry actually raises here. One of the first preflop raises we've seen him do. He's got queen, king, queen. And he's in the cutoff. Four-way action, $80 pot. 10-6-3 rainbow. Doesn't look like anyone really hit much of this. Peter's got ace-6 over there in seat six. And let's see if Jerry can fire. Now he's going to check. Turns a four. Now you got to fire out here with the ace-6 here if you're Peter. Looks like he is going to. Yeah. Waited one street, made sure the coast was clear, and now he's going to bet it. Oh. He's going to bet 40, though. It's still a pretty light bet, Dave. About half the size of the pot. Well, I thought, yeah, well, I guess the pot was 80 pretty, yeah, so. And Jeffrey here is, what is he doing? Making a move, maybe? Obviously thinking about making a move here. He obviously can't just call. Again, I think the other thing that Jeffrey's got to do, and if you look at small leaks in this game, pay attention. If he's going to, I think it's the wrong time to make a move. Is Peter the type of player that's just going to bet as a bluff out with nothing? Well, the problem, the answer is Peter doesn't, he raises. Peter doesn't have much. But Peter's going to call. Well, Jeffrey's been bluffing all day. Yeah. I mean, and then they're, they're on to him now. You know, if there's a leak in Jeffrey's game, it's the Purpose fact that he's trying to win every single hand he plays. And here we go. Here's another little blocker bet here. Peter's going to bet here about 100. And I got to tell you, though, if Peter, if Jeffrey really wants to win this pot, he raises it up to 400, he's going to win it. Right. But he's got to make a big move. He can't raise it up 100. He's got to make a big move. He's going to play like this. He's going to have the balls to go all the way. Dave, exactly. Right? That's the, exactly the point you're saying. And he's going to raise it up. He's got to make a big raise if he's going to win this pot. Well, he's only going to mini raise. He raises to, to 100. Well, I don't know. You know, the way that Peter's looking at it, that might be enough. Well, I mean, let's be honest. What can a six beat except right. your bluff? I don't mind the, the raise to a mini raise. You almost think, wait a second. Did this guy have, like, deuce five? He's going to make the call. And it's going to be over a $500 pot there. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey's bluffed again. And you know what? Jeffrey's Ooh. instincts are right on. Right. He said, this guy's weak. This guy doesn't have a big hand. I can right. bluff him off it. And he's right. He's 100% correct. But you gotta, you got to you know, get the balls to really bluff him. You know? If he makes it 300 there, Peter's not calling. No chance. 100 just makes it too easy for him, doesn't it? You know, he's, he's got to call 100 to win 500. Um, my other problem with that hand, by the way, was also... And obviously you can, you can, it all depends on the player you're playing against. But if the flop is 7-7-3, seven, seven, and a guy bets into me, and I raise him right there on the flop, what am I going to get called by? You know? Maybe I get called by 9s, 10s, and jacks, but I'm only going to, most, a lot of times, often, more often, I'm only going to get called by a hand that beats me. And what do I do if I get re-raised? Pocket 10s here, seat 8. And uh, he just limps in. You know, I think that, Seat 8 might be trying to make the limp re-raise here, Dave. Seat 9, who might be steaming if he thought he was going to raise. But seat 9 does not raise. And we've got 7-way action here. Ace, 6, Jack. And what I mean by that is, uh, on such a passive table, I'm probably going to raise with 10s. But I think the victor just thinks that Jeffrey might just raise anyways, regardless. Yeah. Right well, he, might have been, he might have been looking for that, right? Jeffrey raises, yeah. and then he can pop it back and isolate him. This time Jeffrey decided well, not to. Victor's going to, I mean, here's another classic case of it, Dave. You play a big hand slow, pre-flop. You don't get the flop you're looking for, and he's going to bet with two overcards with six people to act after him. Sometimes people just can't release their hands. Yeah, well, he, he, at least he bet. He didn't call. Threw a little bet in to see where he was at. 
Turns a king, and now Jeff has two pair. Yeah. And Victor now has a gut shot, obviously. A, a 10 or a queen would give Jeff the win. Jeff's going to bet pot. 50 here. Wow, and Victor's going to call? Oh, wow. I mean, you got to remember who you're calling now. Yeah. I mean, Jeff's played five hands all night. River's deuce. And, and, and now Jeff's going to bet 50 when he's checked the set of sevens before. One of the first hands of the night on the river. I, I mean, I think I would still probably bet here with King Jack. I'm just saying I'm surprised to see him bet. Remember yeah, I mean, when he, you know, if you think of the way Jeff's played the game, it's really odd. Like, he checks the seven. He right. reminded me of that. Right. He raises when he has the ace of clubs in his hand. And then he bets here with King Jack. Really strange. Right. Two big lines. His ace was good. His big ace was good. And here we go with another chip count. And so Jeffries is slowly moving down. He was up to 2,100 just about an hour ago. Now down to 1,375. Well, he's been caught on a couple of bluffs. He's probably bluffed off over $1,000 in his chips. Well, at this point, he's bluffed so much yeah. that he's going to get paid off. Time to slow it down. Well, like you said, he's bluffed so much, he really needs to value bet now. His oh, big hands. Well, actually, he can overbet right, right. His, uh, value, his, thing, his, um, his good hands. And did we say goodbye to Peter there? Looks like it. Six Peter's taking his seventeen hundred dollars and going home. King five four here. Okay. And look at this. Jeff's flopped a set of fours. Okay. See if Jeff's gonna Jeff's gonna bet twenty five here to the board. King five four. Now Jerry's got King Jack. Is he gonna get in trouble? Look at this seat eight. Victor's called with five nine. Are you kidding me? Oh, Jerry could really get in trouble here. Jerry oh, Jerry's going to check raise here. Well, Jerry's not that much money. He's got top pair with a pretty good kicker, and Jeff's got a set of fours. I mean, and, and Jeff moves right over the top all in. Now I got to tell you, if Jeff moves all in here, one pair is not good. <laughs> Doesn't matter how much money you have left. One right? pair is yeah. just not good. It's no right. way. Unless you have a redraw. If you have redraws, okay. But if you have yeah. no redraws, what is Victor thinking? I don't even know why. I mean, how do you make the call on the flop? I mean, it's one thing to call. Jeffrey down in seat nine, but Jeff in seat four. And he lets it go. And let's see what. Oh, Jerry's got no money left, does he? I think he's all in here. Oh well, he's got he's got maybe eight bucks in. left. Well, he's gonna make the call. And he's drawing real slim. He needs running cards here. No, nah, it's not gonna do it. That's it. Yeah, and Jeff takes it down. Yep. Set of fours. And that's and, and and to be honest with you, a player like Jeff there supports Russ's Fox. I, I was just gonna say the same thing. It's like if you're gonna get paid off when you, everyone knows you're so tight and you don't make moves and you can just sit back and wait, but you get paid off anyways. Exactly. That's I think what Russ Fox is going for with his hey, If you wanna make money in the one hundred and two hundred dollar game right. and you wanna make it pretty much risk free almost, right. you can play like Jeff Lend. Yep. Jeff Lend, and you can play it like Russ Fox and and, and do that. This is going to be the last hand of the night. So uh, Pretty exciting. Tomorrow night is most likely going to be our uh, $500, 510 unrestricted buy-in game, Dave. And obviously Friday nights are 1020 blinds, no yep. limit game. Yep. You can catch us at 6 o'clock. And we're going to see a raise here on the button to end the night off. He's got ace, king, offsuit, Victor. Look at Jeffrey. Jeffrey's got king, rag, suit. Look, he's going to play it. Well, uh, let's see if Jeffrey, now if a king falls, you wonder, is Jeffrey going to get himself in trouble? Ooh, Fahim is moving all Fahim's in. Fahim's going to pull the limp re-raise all in with pocket eights. Well, you wonder if Victor's probably going to call this, and Jeffrey's probably not. And he's going to he's going to ask for a count down here. He's going to ask for a count. It looks like it's about 190. 193. 193. 193. So is that 193 more? 193. 193 more, Dave. So now there is about I want to say that so 193 to win about 280, right? Two, yeah, 260 to 280. Okay, so. so you're getting a little bit. You're getting like you know one and a half to one on your money. You probably have you know, you probably have live cards. You might not. He did the limp re-raise. You yeah. might have aces or kings. It's a matter if you want to gamble or not. Where the flop was quick, quick. You also have to worry about a stack behind you again, Jeffrey. Yeah, but he just smooth called you. I mean, he smooth called you those small blind. Yeah. You really think he's got aces or kings there? 
Well, he's really thinking about it here. Sometimes if there's enough money in the pot already, you can make this call figuring you're 50-50. Yeah. Well, he's going to make the call. Now, the problem is, is one of his kings are dead. We right. see that. Obviously, he's so, not privy to that information. Fahim, you know, with what cards we know that are out, he's probably about, what, maybe even like a 58% favorite? Yeah, probably like 58, favorite. 59, 41. So we're going to see a race here for about 400 bucks to end the night. And I'm looking to see if any of the other cards are dead. Doesn't look like it. Looks like all the eights are live and all the rest of the aces and the kings are live. Oh, queen four Nothing six. Yet. Victor's Couple got a spades. spade. Turns a spade. Oh. Laura outs here on the river. And the river's a spade. Bahim hits a set. But Victor makes a running flush. Oh, wow. And there it is. Yep. Set eight. Oh. And you'd like to say it's a bad beat, but you know, all the money went in free flop. Nah, so, I mean, you can't even look at that way. Make any difference. So that's going to do it for us tonight. That is. And of course, if uh, tell all your friends about the show, you can watch this show on a 24-hour loop, as well as any other show, all the way up until 4 p.m. tomorrow. And join us tomorrow at 6 Pacific time for our 510 unrestricted No Limit Hold'em game. So for everyone in the booth, and Dave Tuckman, I'm Bart Hansen. Good night, everybody, from Live at the Bike. It's here. It's big. And it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare. At the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles.